I have a bunch of happy smiling people here on the channel and I'm really excited to host this week. Um, so you guys should probably already know me, I guess, since this is my effing channel. <laughs> so I'm Melinda. This is my hand because <laughs> I don't show my face. But um, <laughs> Monk, hey Monk, says who are these hotties? All right, so we have Mango Penguin, who is our fearless leader. We have Margo the Witch. We have Princess Kitty Kush. We have the Powerpuff Gay. And then a super secret special guest that you're not allowed to know about yet. That's three. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you guys want to go ahead and talk about yourselves then real quick? So, Mango? Okay, so hi everyone. You may know me already, Mango Penguin. I am an Oracle card reader. I stream that, and I'm also working on learning natal charts. So yeah, thank you for coming today. And I'll hand over to Margo. Hi y'all, it's Margo, your high priestess and bitch. Pronouns are she, her, and hers. How's everybody doing? Your southern... I wouldn't even say Belle, because I'm not no Belle. I do tarot primarily on Twitch. I also stream sometimes video games with friends. Um, I'm thinking about doing more just chatting, but yeah. Um, welcome in. Good to see y'all. Hope everyone's doing well. Going to be passing it over to Princess. Hi, everyone. I'm just getting caught up in chat. But yes, um, I'm Princess. I am an astrologer. I do a little bit of oracle readings. I play a lot of cozy games. Um, yeah. Uh, I've been studying astrology for about five years. I do birth chart readings. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, but yeah. I pass over to the Powerpuff Gay. Oh my god, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, a streamer, by the way. They are a streamer. <laughs> I am now. So, hi everybody. I'm the Powerpuff Gay, made of sugar, spice, and ready to entice. I am finally a streamer, so links may go up in this chat, who knows? Um, I am the resident love witch of the house, here for your love and sex readings. Um, I read tarot. If you've been here before, you already know that. Other than that, I'm just a loud mouth bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have two very, very exciting announcements today. One is today's reveal and a certain small big project we've been working on for a discord that we will tell you later but thank you and over to melinda <laughs> i know everyone wants to know um yeah by the way if you guys have any questions my moderator and sister turdance is in the chat and then like anyone that has like a pink diamond should be able to answer your questions as well if you have anything that's going on there that you need help with. Um, so what do we do now? We have to talk about our guests, right? We have to give clues. Right. Ooh. Um, let, let's go backwards this time. Okay, so Powerpuff. Okay, so I've been thinking long and hard about this because I'm terrible about giving things away. So I'm just going to give you all three adjectives about this person. Iconic, an outspoken bitch, and it's not an adjective, but that is stunning. Oh my god! That's true. And that's all I'll say before I ruin everything. Just keep talking. <laughs> is the princess next? Oh my turn! Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think this person is very witty. Um, they're very smart, and they, uh... I don't know how, I'm gonna give it away too, okay, they're <laughs> witty, smart, and the hair is fabulous, the hair is everything, they give hair. <laughs> uh, all of the hair. <laughs> is it me? Yes. Okay, uh, this person is again iconic a great great ally to bipoc so i guess that's a little bit of a hit um 
someone I hold very near and dear to my heart who has been helping me out like on the first day that we met and I just can't thank them enough for that because that's that that shows a lot about who this person is and speaks a lot to their character um and that's all I'm going to say before I fuck this up <laughs> <laughs> um to me this person is very well educated very eloquent and a huge supporter of the community and I feel like it's time that we give that support back so over to Melinda all right I'm the one that gets to ruin it right yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely ruin away now okay so this person should be no stranger to people in my community um we have co-streamed many times we have been good friends for a long time now and i'm very happy that he is making his uh resurgent here um so I guess I will go ahead and reveal our super secret guest. Unless you want to guess. <laughs> you want to guess? Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Didn't you have a child uh, again? The fun. Didn't you have a child? <laughs> we did have a child together. So <laughs> that should give it away right there. Okay, here we go. The reveal in three. Two, one. It is the Timish. Ah! Oh my God, it's me! <laughs> I didn't know. I was so confused. <laughs> like, who is these bitches talking about? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I here? Who dragged me into this call? Ah. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, All this right. is, um, <laughs> I'm coming back from hiatus. <laughs> All right, so Timish, do Timish you is want... bringing sexy back. He is bringing sexy back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you kept your receipts. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we gonna return it? But yeah, that's why we're bringing it back. It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> Broke. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, we have Timish back. We have Timish not only back on soon on Twitch, but also as a part of the group of the Superstream group. We didn't expect this. We did not. <laughs> we really did not expect this. We did, we did not. not. But you resurrected him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so now we're going to go into into Timothy's life as much oh, as no. he allows us to. Um, so we're going to start off with what happened, Timish? What's what the story? happened? My goodness. Well, it started pretty much at the beginning of June. Um, as some of you may have known, I got out of... We're just going to call it an abusive relationship. Fact is, it was abusive both ways. Like, I'll own up to my parts, but, you know, there's plenty of blame to go around. Lasted about five years. Um, he made 95% of the money, so when he went, I lost the apartment. Luckily, I had some money that was saved up. Uh, we hadn't basically touched any of our stimmy checks, so... Good, good, that good. Was, that was a good thing, but... Um, but, yeah, so I been living off of my savings account for the past two months um at a certain point i decided to get a job at walmart and i have to say that that was both the best thing that could have happened to me and the worst mistake of my life <laughs> um because that, that it it really stressed me out like it killed any sort of remaining mental health that I may have had <laughs> left. Um, uh, the the best way that I can describe it is like literally every manager I met either snubbed me in some way or was rude or just 
they had a problem and mm -hmm. I couldn't fix it. <laughs> you know? trips. Yes, definitely. Um, none of them knew how to be leaders is essentially what it was. And it was mm -hmm. a very toxic environment. Um, one particular coworker was, they had been there for a while and yet they felt the need to constantly compare themselves to me who had been there for three days. Um, at one point, I think they delivered the line, you know, I've got some advice for you. I would have had this done already. And it's like, okay, first off, that's not advice. Um, but that's just one of many examples mm. of the the toxic, hostile work environment that I was subjected to. Uh, needless to say, I quit. Um, but before I quit, <laughs> uh, I slipped into a really bad depression, as some of you may have noticed or not. I did delete both of my Discord servers. Um, I deleted a lot of stuff off of my Twitch. Um, didn't delete the YouTube channel. I just didn't think it was popular enough anyway. But that's what... Okay, no, views. That, that's what kind of happened, you know? It just... It was bad. And when I say bad... Oh, we have a raid. Oh, yeah, I was going to say something, but I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, nap time for the raid. I appreciate it. Where was I? Bad. You quit um, your job. Bad. Depression. Bad. Right. Um, bad, bad. Bad. So there was that going on. Really bad depression. Hadn't quit the job just yet. I was also floating between, like, two different options on where I would end up living I ended up here, which has been a lot better than I thought it would, but at the time I was thinking, my god, it's either this or that or homelessness, and at this point, like, flip a coin, roll a dice, because... Mm. Uh, but no, being here has not been as bad as I had thought it would. It's come out a lot better, but before we get into that, um, yeah, I just deleted a bunch of stuff, and I was pretty sure I just wasn't coming back. And what was the moment what was what was the i don't know if it's a thought process or the feeling that that we, we, that you got and you're like actually i should come back you know um, actually i can make it work well remember how i said earlier in our little private chat that i was going to drag down the vibe oh okay um, that's part of it do it it's this is oh, part yeah. of it and it's going to get heavy and there's a trigger warning involved if you're not well just come back in 20 minutes after we're done with this um i don't know how else to put it i was going to kill myself and i mean that in the most literal way possible i mean i got i i called an uber to take me to the store so i could get the materials i needed and i tipped the uber driver there and the other Uber driver back to my house, I tipped them the maximum amount because where I was going, I wasn't going to need money. Right. And, um, obviously I didn't, I'm still here. Hi. Uh, but at a certain point, I don't know. I, I wish I had, I wish I had an explanation. I wish I could just sit here and be like, oh, I had this big revelation of no, my time is not done or oh let's just see what happens next i really think it just came down to i took a nap and decided not to but i was going to do it on my birthday july 18th not that the was the day but wouldn't it be so cool to have a tombstone with like your birthday and your death I thought about that too. Like, when i've been in that similar dark place i'm like when do i do uh, my birthday so at least? <laughs> so like i said i was gonna bring drag down the vibe but i feel like it's important for y'all to know that that's how bad it was that mm -hmm. is how bad this job made me feel and how bad it made me feel to give up on something that apparently i am passionate about um Honestly, it's just been kind of shitty just sitting in my room all week going, ah, I want to stream, but this is supposed to be my comeback. This is supposed to be my big, hi, everybody, I'm back, um, and I'm not dead, which is the end. <laughs> or, or back from the dead. <laughs> or back from the dead. Which that is. Um, but I do want to clear the water. If I wanted to be dead, I would be dead right now. And I know behind the scenes, I make a lot of suicidal jokes. I know I... Uh, <laughs> I, I joke a lot about different stuff. For me, that's a coping mechanism. And I'm just here to tell you all, 
I don't think that there is a need to worry anymore because I've been to the edge. I've been to that precipice and mm. we're we're going to try to stay away from that. I'm, if you I'm ever feel close to it time. again, yeah. yeah, I was about to say like, we're here for you. We've got you. I appreciate you being open and vulnerable about it because I don't know about anyone else here, but I've definitely been on that exact same, you know, mental space and it can get very scary when you feel like you can't reach out or where you're very much like feeling alone. Yeah. So props to you for being vulnerable with it because it's it's a very important topic. And it's it's weird because when you're in that state of mind, you don't think about those things. I know up here, like there's people that like me for, for fuck's reason. I don't understand, but that's okay. Not my place. I don't have to understand why y'all bitches like me. But <laughs> um <laughs> but when it's 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 here, that heart brain. That heart brain is so stupid sometimes. It doesn't see things the way the head brain does, you know? And when you're when you're in that fucked up state of mind, you you don't think about reaching out because you, I don't know, for me it's I don't want to bother anybody. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Where it goes, man. Like these are my problems, these are not other people's problems. Yep. I'm gonna, gonna deal with them my on problems, my own. I'll deal with it. And I did, but did it have to get to that point? And that's just something I have to work on. That's something I have to look at on myself. But and we can always check in on you without you having to feel like the need to reach out. You know, not like that you need it, but just being like, you know, hey, hope you're doing well. I love you. A reminder. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing. I don't know. We'll talk. We'll talk about boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> Give me permission, because I'll do it every fucking day. Oh, I'll block you. <laughs> 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 anyway um so that's where i've been um and when it comes down to it i know this is where i need to be this is where i'm happy and i'm currently in a living situation where if i just get my ass in gear and i can stream three times a week i can make enough money to pay my share here because Hell here yeah. has been stupid cheap stupidly cheap where i live right now um so that's the idea that's the plan and we're just going to take it one day at a time because that's all i can do beautifully yeah. sad Yay. <laughs> in a shit together everything's in order I love that for you. right let's open the floor to uh team questions so i've already asked be... my question ah I'll be copying and pasting those that I, I, I can. No, 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 us. Just no, us. Oh, us, us to ask us Timish. <laughs> oh, I have a question. Okay. Timish, what are you drinking out of today? <laughs> so, they all told me that I had to get, like, a special weird cup. I don't have anything weird, but I did decide to just drink out of a pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, why not? That fits. What? Why not? It comes yeah. refill who? Yeah, refill <laughs> not. Pour it in out, me. Going out the middle, man. Just go straight from the source. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if y'all know when I drink, like, well, I guess y'all have never seen me drink, but I drink straight from the bottle. I drink Midori straight from the bottle. I drink wine straight from the bottle. I'm a classy bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would hate to go into drinking competition with you, unless it's Fireball. Maybe that one I could hold my own, but anything else, uh, it, it burns. You could because fuck Fireball. <laughs> fuck it in a <laughs> tiny little Fireball hole. I can't. I cannot I used to like three shots, and that would do me good for like, until I have one of three more shots. That was me with Jaeger bombs. I used to have three Jaeger bombs, and I was sorted all night. Ooh, Jaeger. Can't do it either. Can't do Jaeger. Can't drink. do Now can't do I just drink, like, fruity drinks, you know, because I'm sexual. Like, Pessoa. <laughs> like, Pessoa yeah, but... and orange juice, because she's fruity. But the fruity drinks fuck you up faster, let's be because real. Because you think they're juice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I also have a question. Ooh. So... In this whole super stream group, we've got people from all denominations of life. We've got witches, we've got spiritualists, we've got people that aren't anything, they're just themselves. What would you class yourself as? Are you just Timish, who is a tarot reader and a spiritual person? Or do you hmm. belong to a tarot? Well, 
I this might go into some other questions, so we'll just kind of like lump it all together. Um, I do identify as a witch. Um, I I do spell casting and and shit, you know. Uh, white people magic though. <laughs> <laughs> And this is why I stand. And this is why I stand. <laughs> white people spells. White people spells. But yeah, like, um, I definitely identify as a witch, um, you know, with kind of a focus on like manifestations. One of my specialties, if we're going to get into some weird witchy woo woo shit, is um, I actually like removing curses and sending them back to wherever they came from. I love specifically that. who they came from uh that's why i'm just and i want to point this out because melinda lerland made this for me i did Crazy it's beautiful bitch. it's labradorite and it's so it has pretty. to be one of my favorite stones because it does exactly what i do it shields and reflects and that's that. it's one of my favorite things um to do that and i'll hex the shit out of anybody that like crosses me <laughs> amen. <laughs> Fucking amen. I, I get that, and I would love to talk with you about that more because that's something that I personally don't stray into, but I'm very interested in. You have to be careful with that stuff, though. Like, if you're going to do a curse, make sure that person deserves what they're going, what you you're going to put them through. Otherwise, if you go too light, you're going to feel unfulfilled. You go too heavy. Yeah, the shit comes back on you. At least I believe it does. I know that not all yeah. cultures believe in the, the threefold law. I don't particularly believe in threefold. Like, I don't like to quantify it. But right. um, I do believe to a degree, if you're putting out that bad vibes, those bad vibes are going to come back to you if they are unwarranted. You would try yeah, that, that kind cleanse of right after. Because mm -hmm. that, that's kind of what I do. Like, people try to cleanse before. I'm like, you need that bad energy. You need, or not bad energy, but like, you need that energy yes. to go into the spell. And the way I explain it is like, you're standing in front uh, across a pool, and so is the other person, and you're throwing a big boulder to get them wet. And you will get them <laughs> wet, but you're also going to get wet. There's a splash. Not, not right. as wet as the other person, but if you're not protecting yourself, if you're not cleansing after, you're gonna get a little black a back. If you splash. ain't got that umbrella and that poncho, <laughs> mm -hmm. you gonna get wet. <laughs> I love that analogy. Actually, I never yeah. thought of it that way. I love that. This is why Margot is iconic. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <I'm on> you. <laughs> right. Uh, next but, question. But yeah, I I special or just kind of going back, kind of just rounding it off. Yeah, mm. identify as a witch. Um, yeah, I do tarot. I also do Cards Against Humanity, which mm. that's what we're doing today. Yeah. <laughs> She's here. Um, and I, I read runes, but I'm not comfortable doing those like in public mm. just yet. Because uh, apparently I learned the wrong way of doing runes. And by wrong, I mean racist way of doing runes. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a racist way to read so, runes. To... The rune whole rune thing has been kind of like appropriated by far right wing racist mm -hmm. dare i say nazis was trying to not say the word for trigger warning but you know we're just gonna throw it out there call a duck a duck you know um but nazis have kind of appropriated the rune culture um there were meanings that were associated with certain runes that were implemented later, like during World War II, during the Hitler era, stuff like that. Yep. Uh, so there's there's a lot of miscommunication, and I need to relearn. And yep. that's why I don't do runes on stream just yet. My question for you is, what steps do you take to decolonize your craft because that's something that we've definitely discussed and Ooh. it's why i 1000 percent stand you because <laughs> you take accountability for what you did wrong in the past and you make action to make it better like you don't just say oh i'm gonna be better you do better and mm -hmm. that kind of sh that kind of allyship is what is needed and is like I, I, I would say about to you, but... Please don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you gotta know, I'm like, yeah. but it's props to you. It's, it's what we love, it's what we stand at. Right. Um, you know, I wish that there was, like, an easy cut and dry answer, uh, or rather a complicated, like, specific examples. I can't think of any. The closest one that I can think of is I no longer buy White Sage. Like, I still have some, because I bought it years ago. 
Might as well um, use it. <laughs> I might as well use it, otherwise it's just going to go to waste. Not good. I don't like waste. Um, but I will say, I as I learn, I grow. And I think that it's important that we, Absolutely. as humans, all of us need to do that. When we learn something new, we don't just fight it, right? We don't go, oh, well, what about this? What about that? Just be like, no, it is what it is. And I need to take accountability for that. And we need to move you know, to a different location with this. I'm going to stop real quick because I just saw somebody <laughs> drop a bunch of subs. Yeah, Daddy Doom uh, came through. This like, is Daddy Doom. Right. This, this is, this, yeah, this is Daddy Doom. Oh my god, thank Mr. you. Mr. Father of Twitch. You get a sub, you get a sub, you get a sub. Oh my god. Everybody gets a sub. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Doom. Oh my god. But yeah, Margo, I think what it comes down to is if I hear something, I'll be like, okay, that sounds like a problem. That sounds like it could potentially be an issue. I look inside, I look outside, and if it is an issue at the end of the day, it's gone. It's just not part of my practice anymore. That's so it's just that easy. It should be that easy, but... It really should be. People. I think it's just a lot of people just don't like hearing that they can't do something, they feel limited, and that's not the right. case, you know, that there's other things like, that I, I don't want people to feel limited because, you know, that, I, I hate that too, that, that there's ways to be more empowered in your own exactly. right. And most of these things that belong to closed practices, that come from negative spaces, that have been twisted and performed and contorted, there are other ways to do them, so you're not necessarily limited in, in general. You still can do the things you want to do. You just have to go about doing it in a different way. You know, like, um, I had an experience with, uh, when I was very, very inexperienced as a witch and as a practitioner, where I panicked and I was talking to my friends, like, someone is watching me, there's an evil eye, I need to cleanse, how do I do that? And a friend said to me do an egg cleansing now an egg cleansing is part of a closed practice or at least where i'm from the where, where i know it from is from brujeria and brujeria is is a closed practice that's generational that's hereditary that's passed down and it's very select but bitch there are so many other ways to do a, a, a cleanse even if you just want to get a shower like there are other ways out there and i think just like you said tim it's just so important to be like Oh no, okay, I fucked up. Okay. I didn't even know the egg cleanses were specific to brujeria, because like my mom did them all the time, but she was like, I'm not a witch. I'm like, you have an ancestral it's... altar, mama. <laughs> like brujeria, but it's also there's it stems from different that there's differences in the egg cleansing. Obviously, there's some in uh, Filipino traditions as well. Um a lot of African based magic as um as well. Or like magic that stems from Africa, should I say, African roots. Um, yeah. So it's in a few different cultures and traditions, but it is usually something that is passed on. You know, like not mm. something that we should just Google and be like, oh, okay, this says do this. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful where your sources are. Cite your sources. And me going on Pinterest for sigils. <laughs> Yeah, don't, I like them. Yeah. <laughs> they work okay. for me. <laughs> Some of them, I will say. Mm, you gotta be, you gotta be careful with sigils, though. Like some of you those, never, mm -hmm. you never know what that person's intention was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could be pulling up some King Solomon like demon bullshit. You could mm -hmm. be pulling up some Lilith bullshit. Like you don't mm -hmm. know, you don't know what mm -hmm. that sigil gonna do. <laughs> yeah, and you can use those, but at least know what they're for. Like, I had a sigil for lucid dreaming under my pillow, and I lucid dreamt, but then I also opened up myself for, like, spiritual dream attacks, and I was like, oh, fuck, I remembered why I stopped lucid dreaming! <laughs> Alright, do we have any other questions for Timish? I have one. Just um, one? Well... Just one from my ex-wife? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... So what, how are you going to approach streaming differently from previously mm. now? Um, it's going to sound counterintuitive, but used to, um, 
I think I took too many breaks. I didn't take it seriously enough. Like, if I was just feeling a little bit under the weather, I'd be like, ah, I'm just gonna take a day off, just whatever, you know? Um, so honestly, I think I'm just gonna push myself more is the idea. Now with that, yes, there's this fear of burnout. There's this fear of maybe going too far. Um, we'll just burn that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> I think you have a good method though with like certain days you do stream, like yes. having a schedule helps. And then, you know, knowing right. that your community is gonna sometimes revitalize you. Cause I feel the same way sometimes before I even stream, I'm like, I definitely don't want to. Yeah. And then I get, you know, people show up and show out and it's just mm -hmm. it gives you that energy and it's like okay i'm glad i did do it because my mood changed yep. because of it there has only been one time where i was like i cannot stream today and i streamed and it turned out badly there are other all of the other times were were exactly as you described it oh i don't feel like streaming oh well let's just go on let's just see what happens and then boom it's like a wonderful experience you know everybody comes and they make you laugh and they make you giggle and you're just like who are these beautiful souls coming into this channel and right. all of a sudden your day is magnificent yeah it's exactly that so for me that's how i'm going to change my approach is we're going to be taking it a little bit more seriously. We're going to do the less days off kind of thing, where if it's just like a little inkling of, ah, not feeling it today, let's just do something else. Well, you know, I've got my own private room now. Um, I'm pretty much secluded back in this part of the house. So like, there's nobody going to be fucking with me. I might actually be able to set up a real live schedule now. Um, and that's something that I should definitely look into mm -hmm. but one thing at a time <laughs> you know and then are you going to incorporate things other than tarot as well or i have considered that i would like to show off some playthroughs of other video games like if i ever get into other video games eventually um i know i don't have the room in here but i would like to get my vr headset back up and running and have a place for that and perhaps stream some stuff from there because as again some of my very old community know i used to be a beat saber streamer um no i would like to do vr chat fucking sick oh vr chat no i've never done vr chat it was mainly just rhythm games though yeah i'd be down to do vr chat with you i'm here for it i will watch you for hours playing beat saber <laughs> that game mesmerizes me well, super secret special hint. Uh, if you type the Timish on YouTube, there are two videos where you can watch my fat ass killing some blocks. Um, <laughs> they exist. They're out there. Puff is Googling right now. <laughs> I know. Everyone behind their screen right now. I'm like, oh, new tab. Bitch, Everyone close that new tab. You just opened. Up. <laughs> Was that a question from everyone now? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Everybody. All right. So before we move on to the next segment, uh, let's quickly do a quick ch cheeky cheeky Discord plug. So, yes. oh yeah, we have been working on a Discord server specifically for the Super Stream and our members. Um, so that would be Margo, Princess, Powerpuff, Timish, Melinda, Monk myself and another surprise coming your way not much um, of a surprise if they're already in the server though <laughs> mm -hmm. well the surprise will be when you get into the server so oh, there you okay. go that's what we it is surprises on top of surprises <laughs> Honestly, on top of surprises we just made up surprises be a stream where we don't have a surprise i don't know i don't know but if you we're gonna link you today to the discord server there you go and you're going to see who that surprise is. Yeah. Remember to read the rules, accept them, or you won't have access to anything. <laughs> yeah. And we all have roles. We have roles. If you want to subscribe to a, a specific person, you can do that. Um, and apart from that, have fun. And thank you for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. It's and be mindful of the rules, or you will get muted. <laughs> <laughs> muted and muted. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, you know, uh... we, we have to have the rules because this may turn out to be a huge ass family. You know, essentially everybody is is doing this with their communities. So it's a great thing and we love it. But you know, there's gonna be a lot of y'all, I think and I hope. 
Yeah, and kind of my plan is because I deleted my Discord server, and it's a whole ass pain in the ass, ass and ass bullshit <laughs> to get one back up and running. Ass and ass. Ass and ass. <laughs> ass on ass. Just all right. So not I'm not asses. making. I'm not making a personal Discord server. Um, I'm just going to link it to that one. All right. <laughs> uh, eventually, I will palpatine the shit out of this server, and I'll. <laughs> Take out I don't know Star Wars, but I know enough to know that he's one of the, the, the bad onions. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll just Game of Thrones you all. I'm going to Cersei Lannister this shit. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Daenerys uh, stat. <laughs> see, man. Mm. I no, don't know if that would that. be terrible or if you'd be doing us a service. Honestly. <laughs> it's like flip a coin. <laughs> I'm a benevolent leader. <laughs> <laughs> that that stare at the end. Or am I? It's been love all of my subject. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, thank you for coming into the server. This will be a huge space for yes. any questions you might have for us. If you want to book us, if you, we 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 are trying to respect people's privacy, so. We will not be accepting, unless the streamer tells you, we will not be accepting DMs. That's why the specific channels exist for yeah. us. And I say my personal settings on Discord are that you do not require a friendship or a shared server to send me messages. But I don't know if that server is going to supersede those settings or how that works. But if you DM me, I'm not going to bite your head off. But yes. I understand if others will, and you should understand <laughs> that too. <laughs> and it serves as well for, for Timish as his server as well, and for, I don't know if Powerpuff as well, if you are going to make your own or if you want to use this one. I've been debating it, but currently everything is up in the air. I feel like I should actually establish the stream first. Yes. Yeah. Um, but well, it's, it's, this will be a good base for you. Mm. And yeah, yeah, if you want to pop in to any of that, if you go on the, the portal segment, that's where we all are. We all have our own individual sections. Send us a message. And to access those, you react to the roles, whether you want to be... Um, to access who, so you don't have to be spammed by notification. Mm. And things like that. So and we, we have, have my role. I forgot what my cheesecake. I no, it's cheesecake. Cheesecake. <laughs> of course it is. I just realized that uh, I thought it was like cheesecake. So that's so cute. Not cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, we have mangoes for mango, witches for marigo, kitties for princess, right? Yes. Dems for Melinda, fairies for me, cheesecakes for Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is monks? Hammies. Oh, yeah. um, hammies. Hamsters. Aww. Hammies. And then... Aliens. Oh, you didn't know that. That's what we don't do with secrets! Is they in the Discord? <laughs> <laughs> what if they don't enter the Discord? Well, then mm. you don't know who that is. Fuck you. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, at least you didn't give away Timmy. Exactly. I, I didn't. I did what well on today? one. Okay, I told you. Well, well, I did so well at keeping me hidden. I think that there were probably only like three people who knew I was going to be here. Genuinely, I, I, I that was, was my fault. I told somebody else, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I have only been talking about like the reveal to these guys and just saving everything, <laughs> being like, "I'm not. I'm not doing it this time." And then I did it this time, but in a different way. All right. Uh, We're so well, proud of you. Let's let's take a quick cheers. Just show people oh, yeah. our wings. Just a quick cheers. Oh, right. <laughs> to you. I just have a normal bottle. I'm sorry. Me too. I grabbed a cup, but at least it has pictures on it. Mine's a cauldron. <laughs> at least it has pictures. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to get a more interesting cup. Y'all wait. There's there's all sorts of thrift stores around here. I, I think someone had a toilet themed mug, didn't they? Was that Melinda? Or who, who no, was uh, no. Toilet? 
No, I was going to have a bathtub, like a little doll's bathtub. Uh, and I was going to have, that. like, a little toaster charm to put in there. <laughs> but it uh, didn't work I've out. I've seen so many interesting utensils. Like a trash can. Like a drinking receptacle. I love that. I mean, Monk is tried and tested with a huge ass buzz. It's bigger than my aspirations in life, honestly. <laughs> okay, now we can move on um, to our short segment of Timish Talks. So, we would like I to talk? know, mostly, yes, yeah, so to the, the audience, we're just going to ask you some things, as I guess, just talk about things. Like, so for me, Timish, I see you as... A really prominent tarot reader, but you also incorporate other ideas, I suppose. Like we have cards against humanity. Like mm. how how do you go about reading that? Like what is your source? What is your information, so to say? Goodness, um, you know, kind of going back to tarot because this is kind of one of the examples that I've recently, like, concocted to make the connection, is, you know, let's say in tarot you get the death card, all right? Sometimes, yes, very rarely, it means literal death. Very rarely. But it represents transformation, it represents things that have to die away to get replaced by something else, blah, blah, blah. You oh, know, it's yeah. metaphorical. So if I pick, I don't know, what do we got here? Jesus fucking Christ. So I got white people. Um, <laughs> because of course card. I did. Just the death card. Because um, of course I did. <laughs> I took a oh. <laughs> So when we get a card people. when we get a card like white people, we're looking at the metaphors. What do white people represent? What are some things that they've done in history? What is <laughs> <laughs> Our ancestors came through today. Oh, I'm hanging on. <laughs> I don't even know where to go from this. That that just completely busted my train of thought. <laughs> Good lord! All right. Expect the changes. <laughs> hmm. Um. Beware of new friends, perhaps. <laughs> what? The gifts what? they bring oh. you are going to have extra strings attached. <laughs> or, or on a lower vibration, or a more simplified, how I could translate that card. Of course, going back, like, context is everything when you're reading someone, all right? It's very important for you to know at least a little bit of what their situation is entailing, you know? especially if you're not really that intuitive of a reader you know some people have to ask a lot of questions during a reading and i'm not talking about this is a huge pet peeve i'm sorry if i'm going to step on any toes here but i just want to point this out i hate it when people are all like are you male or female that shit that shit kills me every time i see a reader on twitch and they're like are you boy or girl and it's like <laughs> first <laughs> off, <laughs> first off <laughs> why does this matter second uh, are you wanting my gender or my sex? And third, you know there's more than two. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, it bothers me because that shouldn't be important information because we're all human. We're all going mm. to experience <clears throat> specific energies, whether that energy may be different because of your gender. It's so rare for that to happen. Mm. I don't know. Oh. For me, a huge pet peeve. So just want to throw that out there, a little soapbox moment. Anyway, um, but it is important to understand the context. Like whenever I give a love reading, first thing I ask, all right, are you single? Are you looking? Or are you involved? Like, you need I to have to establish a base. You have mm -hmm. to establish a base. Because if I pull the two of cups, okay, well, you're going to find new love. Well, I'm with my boyfriend right now. Well, fine. It's renewed love. Fuck you. You know, like it changes <laughs> whether that context is there or not. That's just how it is. Um, so going back to the white people it. cards against humanity card, another context for me would be like basic like vanilla like I you like know vanilla. <laughs> i do too I, there is nothing wrong with vanilla i fucking love vanilla like it's my favorite ice cream flavor Same. i'm so i'm so lame but you know for me it's simple 
I don't know. I, this is going to come across as so wrong, but I would think of the white people <laughs> cards against humanity card as like commonplace, seen a lot. Um, I don't want to say like generic, but like it's there. Right. Yeah. And it's prominent. You know, those are the energies that we're looking at. So for me, when I pull a cards against humanity card, that's what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the metaphorical value. Very rarely are these cards taken literally. And sometimes they are. Sometimes. Like dick fingers. Like dick fingers. You have to take that card literally every time. <laughs> literally. If you got dick fingers, it means dick fingers are in your future, mama. <laughs> Spicy one. Spicy one. <laughs> if, if, if I'm able to really piggyback on the whole uh, male or female, what I, I also kind of feel that way about masculine or feminine, mainly because we have so many limited or mm -hmm. like... When we think of masculine, we think of a certain type of way of being, but I know people with masculine energy that are very, like, what I tend to say is, like, for masculine, I do I use, like, sun energy, like, diurnal, and for feminine, I, it's more, like, nocturnal, because it's more, like, not diluted, but not as active and more, like, on the psychic, emotional side and things like that. Not to not say that masculine and feminine are, like, wrong to use, but, like, you can be masculine and diurnal or masculine and nocturnal absolutely things like that right and no, i actually I think that's a really that. nice way of saying it because i always struggle with because when i'm feeling a person's energy it's a feeling it's not a thing i can name but then obviously you're trying to tell somebody so you have to put a name to it and then sometimes i'll put a name and be like it's very feminine energy but that doesn't encompass that the, the feeling of, of what that is so thank you for bringing that up i'll type it in chat so thought, we can food for thought i see why what what is it what's, what's your take on because i've i've been to i've been through Twitch through a lot of readers to get readings and like either way I do readings is different as well. What is your take on secondary tertiary third person energy? Hmm. Like my reading for the people that aren't yeah. I... Or they're like oh, my boyfriend or like my partner, my, my mother, my father, whatever. Yeah, nobody does it except me. I'll I'll do a fucking third party reading, but <laughs> you're going to get a little disclaimer okay because i like to throw disclaimers on some of my readings especially when it comes to like you know financial advice or legal advice health advice you know stuff like that it's like look you need to go to a professional don't be talking to plastic code pieces of cardboard for this shit. <laughs> all right but like, my... a couple of therapists I don't need right me. <laughs> right but when it comes to when it comes to third party readings i give a spiritual disclaimer and what that basically entail entails is yes i will do this third party reading for you but i'm shifting the blame to you i'm not going to take anything from this yep understand that if you are going to ask these third party questions you're going to open yourself up to those same energies all right and how that can manifest is in a couple different ways one that person could get a reading about you behind your back and you won't <laughs> even know about it Another way is if they're not into all that, and something that I experienced firsthand with one of my clients that I had to block, um, is rumors can be started about you, and whether they may be true or not, because it's all about that information being exposed that you didn't consent to. Yeah. And when you ask for third-party readings, that's the energy you are opening yourself up to. And I tell people that now, because I don't want any part of that. I'll still do it for you, because you're going to get it one way or another. Um, and you know nobody else fucking does it, so I might as well. Like I them too, <laughs> but I, I always tell the people I don't know if this person will give you a clear reading because I don't know if they're protected. I don't know if their guides don't want me to, to to be the thing. And I have I've had people try to read me without their consent, and they give me warnings and this, this, and that. And I'm like, that's lovely, but I don't think you read for me <laughs> because I did not consent, and my guides are very much like. They'll give you, a, they'll reverse the Uno card and be like, nah, it's about you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I I personally don't do them because I, for myself, require permission for the people I'm reading for. If somebody comes to you and asks for a reading, that is them giving you permission. They've asked that mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you start coming in and be like, my boyfriend's acting really weird and I want to know why. Or, and if sometimes I do get 
the third party readings and I will then generalize the question to center it around the person asking. So I will try to find a way of wording the question so they're still kind of getting the information that they want. But I ain't going digging around in no person's shit that has not asked me to. Because it, it's a fine line and like you said, you're opening up to yourself to a world of shit that, mm -hmm. that is not your problem. Mm -hmm. The one thing I won't do for other third party readings, if someone wants me to read for someone else and not in their room or not around, like if, if you want me to read for your your friend who's watching with you and they consent, I'll do it. Fine. But if you want me to read for like a, a brother or a sibling like that, I'm like, you should talk to them. I, cause I'm, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's <laughs> when I'm like, no. But if it's relationships because I'm nosy <laughs> and the leader in me loves love, I'm like, okay, yeah. We'll see what we need to work around here. We'll see what we can do. I agree with all of that. You know, we want to help you as readers, but we also don't want to go get an accident involved in your shit, because it's not our shit. Mm -hmm. It ain't my karma I want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's tricky oh, yes. when you If do you don't accept reader. the rules in the Discord, you will be banned. I'm just kidding, you will be kicked. <laughs> <laughs> Be We're banished. gonna shoot your families in front of you. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So I think we can now give way to a very special segment where you will be bombarded, Timish. So be oh, ready. Be ready. Annoyed. We are gonna open the floor to questions and the, questions from the chat. If you're in the chat, you have something to ask Timish. Please ask now. And it would be helpful if you would like highlight your message so you yes, can please. find it easier. And I'll be copying and pasting them on a note so that I keep in, uh, I keep them in tab for y'all. Thank Excellent. you. You can also ask anyone else a question, but today Timish is the star. So yes, the fucking star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm living for your hair. The mysteries, the secrets of holds. Yeah. <laughs> He's here. This is his debut. Make the most of it. Get yeah. those answers. Those questions. Write them down. Like yeah. Oh, okay, oh. Monk. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first question from Monk. <laughs> Dear Tim, how can you love cheese so much? What are your thoughts on chicken? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this is incredibly topical. Um, I don't know why I fucking love cheese so much. It's just. <laughs> I, I blame I blame my, my cancer stellium for the dairy love mm. because <laughs> milk, cheese, cream, yogurt, but, all but does of that. Does your Virgo moon say no? <laughs> my Virgo, Virgo moon just no? my, my Virgo moon just sits in the corner and screams because they're like, <laughs> why, why do you like this? And I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my Lilith is in cancer, and I think that's why when I'm in emotional mood, I'm just like dairy, dairy, dairy. Oh <laughs> dairy is amazing, like just so that's the whole thing about cheese now what are my thoughts on chicken quite frankly chicken is the only meat that i would probably break for i am officially 100 percent vegetarian oh, wow. i've made the jump i've made the leap wow. i'm not sure if i'm gonna go vegan i'm gonna have to try that cashew cheese we'll see how that turns out it, yeah it, it's it's something i'll tell you it's that. Something. Something. i will say i I actually like soy milk better than real milk. Oh, I actually so do. I, I, love it. I love almond but it's expensive. milk. Almond milk is the shit. I feel very strongly about milk, okay? And I know that's such a weird thing to feel strongly for, but no. I have Not when you're a gay milk. man. Milk is everything. Milk. <laughs> mm. But I can genuinely sit and just drink. And my boyfriend used to do this. In fact, for my last birthday, for my 22nd birthday, my best friend that I was living with at the time went out. She bought me the Sims 4 expansion, you know, the wintry Wonderland one. It was amazing. And then she came home with a four pint of milk and said, I know you like milk. So I thought, I just, <laughs> just, thought, it, just thought it'd be funny. I was like, milk is never funny. I don't play around. And I sat and I drank that. Did there's a fucking joke? <laughs> I love milk, and the fact that y'all are like bastardizing milk. I. Mm -mm. We also had a question earlier from Maple that did not get highlighted, but it was a silly question about what's the secret to having such amazing and voluminous hair. I blame my mother. 
<laughs> Genetics. <laughs> um, my Genetics. mother, my mother had this hair, but it was like bright red. Okay. Um, and there's probably some truth to that Freudian shit because I do love me a good redhead. All right. I'm uh, throw that out there. Just throwing it out Don't there. Don't we all though? I love. I a mean, good honestly. Too. But she used to call her hair Medusa Mop, and nothing has that. ever ever stuck with me more than that and i have now embraced my own medusa mop and yeah it, it's, it's giving me very coven. much um who's that from coven <gasps> her, Valencia, I love her. Myrtle. Myrtle. myrtle snow myrtle it's very bad not the yes. witches all knowing about ahs coven okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I noticed that there were a lot of highlighted questions, but the chat done moved up and oh, yeah. so, um, so difficult. Hey, we, we Nick, Nick had asked, why didn't my boyfriend reach out? LOL, love Nick. you. <laughs> I, just, I, just... I didn't reach out because when you're in that headspace, you don't reach out to anybody. And I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. That's all I can do. But I'm going to try to do better next time. For real. And then Diva Dwarf's question was, Timish, why am I a single hoe? Maybe I'm too bitch, bitch delicious for people to handle. <laughs> that. Absolutely, Diva. You are entirely too bitch delicious for people yeah. to handle. And Turden says, is, what is one tip you have for people going through a deep depression? Good question. Oh. Huh. Fucking take a nap. Naps have been my nap. savior. I don't know if that's true for everybody. Cancers. But if <laughs> I'll take I'll take a nap. Man. Take I'm like, a do nap. I really feel this way? <laughs> or let me just nap on it. <laughs> you know, for for me it's just it's the human equivalent of have you tried turning it off and on again? You know? <laughs> After a nap, it's a nice little reset. <laughs> You're back and oh. and there you are. That is so well put, actually. <laughs> and oh. um, I guess some more, some better advice and more advice for me than, than anyone else is, fuck, there's people that love you, whether you see it or not, and you don't have to understand why they love you. I certainly don't, but you know, that's not my place. So just know that there are people out there who will support you and love you and they want to help. There are people out there who want to help. Just fucking find them. Just, just call them up. They're they're in your phone. Beautifully said. That's what I'm gonna um, say. Princess Kitty Kush asked, "What is your favorite thing about your wife, Melinda? Can we have a bit of a backstory in y'all's relationship?" <laughs> oh my god! I, I think what I think what first attracted me to my ex-wife um, <laughs> oh my is huge all, of, all of her Virgo placements. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, you're with me, love. Jen, right? Hello, thank you. Thank you for the thank raid. For the raid. Oh, hell yeah, we got a raid. Woo woo. <laughs> Hi, Jen. God, Melinda, she's just, she's just amazing. I, I just, when we were both started out streaming, like, you know, I was doing the whole hand model thing too, because um, I didn't have multiple cameras like I got now. I've got cameras in a fucking drawer now, just because. <laughs> but, um got so many cameras uh but yeah like i felt like we were very similar in in the way that we read um i'm gonna call her out me. real quick uh just on stream honestly i think i yeah. wandered into her stream she wandered into mine the tarot um, streets yeah <laughs> we just were wandering through the tarot streets and we were like oh hey i see you you know <laughs> um but for me, like, the thing that really got me is I loved the way that she read, and I was like, wow, what a talented reader, what an amazing person. And I find out this bitch has only been touching cards for a year. Mm. And I'm like, how are you insane. so good with such little experience? Like, right? for real. <laughs> for real. She is amazing. Um, when you're good, you're good. When you're good, you're good. When you've got a talent, you've got it. You know? When you have mm -hmm. Cancer Moon in the 12th house, you just have Cancer Moon in the 12th house. You can all be <laughs> one with magic, baby. Mm -hmm. What have we? Oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I, I think that's what it was. I was just, I mean, I know it sounds so generic, but I was just drawn to her energy. You know, I felt like we were very mm -hmm. similar. We had about the same amount of followers, so I kind of saw her as a peer. Not necessarily as somebody above or beneath me. And a uh, rival. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you all got married. And a I rival. See, see, right? I get it. 
It's getting That's me Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, Brandy. Melinda's amazing. I, I can't put it. Amen. Guys, amazing. this is supposed to be you about are. Timish, not me. <laughs> we all know he's great. We all know. Yeah, we, we already know I'm good. <laughs> Some people need to be reminded of their greatness. <laughs> we already know that I'm good. I'm it's not that. It's, it's, it's not that. To, to Raiders coming in, hi, thank you for coming. We are in our Q&A section. We so are. if you have any questions for Timish, please ask. We will also answer questions as well, but today's star is Timish. And make sure to highlight your message so I can copy paste and keep on top of that. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Marco. You are you're a blessing. <laughs> That's the Capricorn rising coming out. I'm like the secretary just be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what it is. <laughs> it just needs to be organized. I, you know, you said secretary yeah. and now I'm not so sure. Or do you have teacher vibes or secretary vibes with the hair, the outfit? I can do it all, honey. You can, can do, do it all. Teaching. I'm I can be whatever man. you want me to be. <laughs> I'm very flexible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not though. One time I was in a in a drag it, it was like a drag race college party and I was it was they were doing like lip sync battles and so I went up first and I've never done a a, a split, so I don't know why in my drunken state of mind I thought it'd be a great idea to just oh. pop a split. Oh no. And I pulled my leg and they had to carry me out of that party wearing a dress. <laughs> And I was like, I pulled my hamstring for like a good month. We it was love the that. Worst. Oh no. Stretch before you split. I used to be able to do it like on command, and now I'm old, my knees just don't work anymore. So like it can't. Did this bitch just say he old? Mm. Mm. I have a question for you. Oh? Um, where did Cards Against Humanity come from? Uh, whoever idea. created it, I guess. No, <laughs> no, no, the idea. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, actually, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a lame story if I'm just being honest. Because I was scrolling through memes as I do. You know, I love sharing memes. Join our Discord oh, for the memes, please. Um, <laughs> please do not mute the spam channel like some people. I had to. <laughs> I'm not about the spam. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> My greatness isn't for everyone. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> anyway. <Shots fired. laughs> anyway, so, um, no, I was just scrolling through memes and I saw this stupid fucking meme about like 2020 is what happens when you confuse your tarot cards for Cards Against Humanity cards. And I was like, but can we though? And I was at a party with my now ex, his mother, and a bunch of other people who don't matter anymore. Um, and I had Cards Against Humanity with me, and I was like, you know what, fuck this, Let, let's see. Let me see if I can read you with these cards. And I got some very interesting results that night. And I was like, okay, let's do this. We're, we're mm -hmm. doing this. We're going to jump right in. And that's kind of where it came from. I, I give credit to whoever made that meme, because that's what inspired me to do <laughs> this shit. <laughs> I think that's like the first time I, I wandered into your channel. You were doing Cards Against Humanity's readings, and I was like, what the hell, what the hell is this? And I was like, let's give it a go. Let's see how it happens. And just seeing other people get readings, I was like, okay, maybe not. <laughs> I was like, we're getting red, red. Let me. My it's first funny. experience was very similar. I saw y'all with your like wall of decks. Oh man. And I was like, ugh. And then someone specifically asked for them. You pulled them on from the side. I'm like, there's more. <laughs> there's more. And then you read from them, and I was howling like a motherfucker those cards <laughs> do not hold back i'm always they, like they surprised by readers like that use and traditional tarot like that like with mongos pokemon cards with your cards against humanities some seeing some other people use like digimon and uh Yu -Gi -Oh, it's it's wow. fucking amazing to me that that is like challenging your intuition and growing that's that's fucking amazing i love it i i do have a bit of a confession to make though so the tarot decks have gotten bigger i've added oh. like three or four since the last time i was live oh i am at 42 tarot decks oh Holy my god the answer oh god. You've, you've arrived at the answer and you just can't go beyond that now i, don't I know. genuinely we'll <laughs> i have three 
and I think for now I'm okay with that. 42 deaths, <laughs> that's, that's too many voices. 42 <laughs> tarot and 4 oracle, 5 if you count my cards against humanity. I do, oh, I do. <laughs> Okay. I it's an oracle deck. The, it's this an oracle this deck. is now an oracle deck. I can't take it to parties and play anymore. It's been sanctified. <laughs> <laughs> you only take it to read people. <laughs> it's ultimated. It's 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 fine. Like she's been ordained. <laughs> it has. It's it's been it's been dipped in 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 the moon water, as it were. In the moonshine. <laughs> Mama Moon took one look at that collection of cards. She was like, "Okay, yeah, she's one of us. Okay, okay." <laughs> um. Okay. Does anyone from chat have any more questions? Yeah. We might. I thought take... that there were a ton of highlighted questions. Yeah, there were. Did you? Were that? Was that it? Did I head miss any? Did I miss? That's what I was gonna say. Like, I'm where? Scrolling up again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got them all. Yeah, Princess was the last one that was highlighted. So if I missed one, it's because it wasn't highlighted. Well, this is... Well, if there are no more questions, let's give it about a f f just a few more minutes, I guess. Two more minutes. Um, so please give us your questions for Timish. We will answer your questions as well. Highlight your message. And then afterwards, we will go into readings. But I think we could take a break if you need one. Guys. Do people need to pee? Do people need to go get food, a drink? I should I like pee and food. refill my water. Yeah, a little break before we start readings might be a good idea. Mm. Yeah, sounds good to me. Oh yes, Phantom Punk, yes. We, we just, <laughs> just answered that question, yeah. <laughs> um... Okay. We are monk, don't worry. We've all got our hydration. But I can't remember how I was going to finish that sentence. But we've all got water, and I'm pretty sure we've all eaten. If you want to, if you want to ask questions in the Discord, yes, go into chit chat and just put your question there. Yeah, chit chat. That's the the general everyone mingle space, you know. Thank you, Countess, for that. All right, so are we taking a, like, five-minute break, then? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I will put it on the Be Right Back screen, then. So, see you guys all later. See ya.
All right, we are back. <laughs> Peace signs. Um, and I think we're going to start readings now, correct? Yes. All right, so let me open up the queue. And I think we're only doing 10 readings. So if you want in there, you better get in there fast. All right, queue is open. Bader. Ooh, I want to join the queue. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to get five free regions. Still, join. still joins the queue. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I won't be like that. That would just be mean. My back is hurting. I think it's from the fucking bra. I don't know how I wear these damn things so often. No, oh, I fucking hate I, I don't even have that big of boobs either. You know, look it, though. Like on days where I'm feeling like I'm feeling my high fam sticking a bra <laughs> up. I'm like, oh my god, titties. <laughs> I get very it, excited by them. It definitely gives me a little bit more boobage because of the padding, but I do not fill them out, so... <laughs> Want some of mine? Yes. yes. Please Red Bull me some. <laughs> Honestly, in the next few years, I intend to have my room, so... We can go in together and be like, I'll, I'll, I'll take what she's been moving. <laughs> we'll be on, we'll be on slabs next to each other, but like, give it all the day. Besties. <laughs> All right, we have two spots left. We have eight people so far in the queue. I love Damn. that. Thank you for all the love, you guys. That was really fun. I know. Right. Right. Y'all just swarmed us. Like Monk, that's all I fucking eat is breads and cheeses. And it goes not even to my ass. It goes to my tummy. <laughs> what was it? There was a myth in Japan a while ago that if you drank a lot of strawberry milk, it would make your boobs bigger. Really? Yeah. Oh, soya milk as well. Yeah. No comment. I gotta get more soy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, there is a scientific reason in it as well. It's because sometimes with the way that milk is processed, there is a lot more estrogen involved. So it like boosts estrogen, estrogen I love it. I was just gonna say, we don't got that. We got, we got estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, but it's estrogen. Okay. You, you're a teacher, you're right, you're right. I I'm eating the keto chips. You say estrogen? I swear to God. But that's because How do you guys Ian... say aluminum foil? Do you aluminum, mean aluminum, aluminum. as in I? Don't even go <laughs> for me. You said them all. <laughs> aluminum. We have one spot left for readings. Get your name in there. Your mm. name in the Goblet of Fire, Harry. So how we're going to do readings today, uh, chat, is that you get to pick who starts off the reading. They are collective readings only. And we will try and go in a circle if we can, I guess. We're all just pulling right. one card, right? Is that going to yeah, be... the circle going? Yeah. It is one Likewise. card pulls from everyone. Um, so yes, that is today's readings. Hi. I will be using the visionary tarot, and all I ask for when, for me, is you tell me when to stop shuffling for your reading. I'm just very much like that. Just type it in the chat, and I'll know. It's okay. We all have our, our little quirks when it comes to reading. I did a reading in person today earlier before, like uh, at the off in front of the office with the management people. And I literally told them, just type stop in the chat whenever you're ready to tell me to stop. And I was like, wait, no. no. Tell me, like, like, say stop. I'm like, what? Like, type stop in the chat. You want me to text that to you? <laughs> what? The phone is required for Mando's in person reading. <laughs> And I'll, I'll be using the Rebel deck and the Visionary Tarot. I'll be using Cards Against Humanity. Okay, can we have Tarish go last all the time then? Because we can't compete with that. No, this is That's fair. fair. That's fair. You know? Like, you can't just <laughs> abolish it, all of us. Like, <laughs> how am I going to set the mood with white people? Like, right? White people, right? I cannot believe Name that that the was rating. the cause. That was iconic. 
I'm That's still mad about it. White <laughs> people. This is getting burned, Blade. This is the last time I'm reading with this deck. <laughs> all right. So, are we all ready? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm just shuffling all my decks, giving them a good shuffle. Stupid things. Did we? Did we have the first one? Um, the first person is Nick. So Nick, if you have a question, Ooh. let us know. My girlfriend. What the heck? Mm. It depends on the question. All right. Is that your real question, Nick? Do I have a hex on me? Everything in my house is breaking. I don't know. I don't know if I'm qualified Nick to answer that. Yeah. I think I'm gonna sit this one out. Let yeah. me know if the typing stop in the chat for me, baby. Don't shop at IKEA. No. <laughs> I'm dead. I've had that happen once, and it was a spirit that I invited home because they were lonely, and they thought it'd be funny to like throw me in in the in the bathtub and break my favorite bowl. And I was like, okay, go back home. <laughs> I was being nice. Skip me and I'll ask a different question, Nick says. Okay. Oh, well, I was like, I don't know if right. we're gonna get very many answers from that just with like tarot and stuff, I mm. guess, but. It's a very yes or no question, which yeah. I have, a, I found a way to do with tarot, but I always say take it with a grain of salt. Right. Because... I'm very right. ambiguous and likes to be very vague. Okay, so. yeah. So Nick, I'm gonna move you down for now. And then next would be Turdance then. You don't have to have a question, you can request a general as well. That's true yeah, too. That's totally fine. But yeah. I think Nick just wants to think for a little bit, so Yeah. Yeah, take your time. Mustard has good IKEA. I mean IKEA has good mustard. <laughs> mustard has good IKEA. <laughs> sure thing. English is hard. Well then just, okay, Nick hard. Nick wants a general then, so I guess we're going back to Nick. Turdance, sorry. Okay, okay. We'll get to you, Turdance. We promise, we promise. Oh! Nick, your cards are very jumpy for me today, because your other card fell out for me as well. Yeah, mine did too. But, and then this one literally, like, flicked itself out of the deck. So there was a message for you. <laughs> I've gone ahead and just tapped into your energy really quick. And because I wasn't seeing a stop, but I felt it. <laughs> My fingers were getting tired and it was like, stop it. That's okay. I don't want residual Nick energy anyways. <laughs> Ouch. Turn <Turtles>. it. <laughs> not coming to Nick. <laughs> Nick ah. residual. <laughs> <laughs> Nick says stop. Oh, I did, I did. Like, oh, okay. Yo energy, okay. yo. Ah. All right, so who's going first? Not so, me. <laughs> yeah, right, no. Timish has to go last, but... So we, it, it makes sense to start with either me or Melinda then. You're the yeah, host then we can go. Oh, to make the circle. Yeah. I don't I'm care. sorry. It, d d you, you go first, Melinda. This is your channel, Wait. the host. Uh, Where's the question? It's just general. It's just general. general. Oh, okay. The thing is also it has a use because it is hot as shit in this room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm really well, looking for one on Amazon right now. <laughs> I have a watermelon one that's beautiful and I can't find one. Alright, well if I'm going first, I got the Seven of Swords, which for me is a card of like making sure that you kind of just um, like cut your losses and decide to move on. Like you might have not gotten everything you wanted out of a certain situation. 
And this is kind of just saying, take things at face value in order to move on. Don't hang on to things. Just kind of, yeah, cut, cut your losses and move on. That's what I got. And then I guess we would go to Princess, right? Okay. Yes. Um, so for me, you pulled uh, the Virgo card, um, which its words, its phrase is I analyze. So Virgo has a lot to do with being picky, about being precise, about being calculated. Virgos are overanalyzers, overthinkers. It could also mean that you're very much in your head right now. Virgos are constantly living up here. Uh, but Virgo has a lot to do with picking out the excess. Um, removing what's not needed. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is a very oh, small oh, planet. It likes to work in very tight little circles. So being very selective with your energy or similar to what Melinda is saying, cutting your losses and moving forward with what matters. Virgos and Geminis are able to work with very little um, because they're very calculated and they're very uh, logical people. So. What I have for you is the moon card. So a lot of self-doubt, a lot of spending a little bit, perhaps too much time in your subconscious and letting your mind wander with those thoughts. You know, it's good to make room for, for the weird and the, the confusing in our life, but remember to remain grounded, especially if like, if you, things in your house are still breaking and things like that, try to make a little bit of sense of it and Sometimes we manifest the subconscious into our reality. I'm not saying that you're responsible for what's happening around you, but perhaps you're not making it better by giving it that energy and like acknowledging it, right? Be like, okay, shit's happening, moving on. You know what I mean? Okay. And I drew the Gibbous Moon, okay? Which is a very pleasant card because it's trying to it's trying to reaffirm you that you're on the right path. You are close to achieving something, and there are there's just small things that are in your way, like small obstacles that you need to remove. Um, but this is a, a really good reassurance card. It's like, don't worry about anything. Everything is sorted. Just identify those small problems and get rid of them. Okay, and I pulled something very similar to these guys. It's moving in different directions. It's moving somewhere new. Um, so for me, you actually pulled the Ten of Pentacles, and I like to refer to this as the Chrysalis card because this, in the imagery, you see like a moth, and this moth has just recently come out of the chrysalis. She's transcended. Okay, and for me, that's very breaking out of old habits breaking out of your cocoon moving in a different direction and taking everything that you've worked hard for you know yourself your self-confidence everything that you've worked hard for and earned and gained so far and just seeing how it goes down a different try something new try these new things and see what they bring to you you know it's a new journey it's a new start and that's what lesson than what they have to say well, I guess I've got to tie it all up. Oh, yay! <laughs> yay! Mm. What are we going to draw? So, <laughs> we've got a lot of energies here about new stuff, almost to completion, kind of getting stuck, right? You know, like, it's all there. Um, and especially, I think we're going to pull on that Virgo energy from Princess as well for this one. We've got walking into a glass door. Am I blurry still? probably still blurry come on auto focus focus anyway we'll just live with it so yeah walking into a glass door um you just all of these things are true right everything that we've been telling you all in line you just got to watch out for those invisible obstacles all right because there is something there that is undermining you there is something unseen and there is something that it may be mundane but it's a simple solution. You just gotta pull the handle. Don't try to walk into the door. <laughs> you got this shit. That's what I've got for you. Yay! Yay! Let's get some love Woo. in the chat. Or as Brandy would say, and I can't stop saying it around my house, snaps in the good fucking chat. 
<laughs> it's the motherfucking that really everywhere. right it ties it all together yeah. and the motherfucking child you're welcome <laughs> i just do that because it's very poetic instead of like i don't know it's weird to clap for someone when it's just you in the room but it's like Same. I, snap. Snap a, I snap a lot Sometimes I do it too much though, and I feel like I'm at like a poetry slam full of hipsters. I was a poetry <laughs> person when I was younger, so I think I'm. Where's my IPA? Speed. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this next? Turdens. Turdens. Turdens, my love. We're gonna read this shit out of Melinda's sister. <laughs> I really want, uh, I really want to look at y'all's birth charts. Both of you together? Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Like in the same session. That'd be cool. Alright, Turden says, I need help healing my inner critic. I know I've always been super self-critical, but I am realizing now it's starting to become external onto others. I'd like to heal whatever is causing it for myself and for others. You know what's so funny? I was looking at Melinda's birth chart the other day, because I'm just Nia like that. Yeah, and so um, Melinda is currently having this new moon aspecting her third and ninth house, which rules her siblings. And the new moon is all about new beginnings, you know. Uh, it's a shedding process. It's all about new moons, in my opinion, hurt more than full moons, way more. Uh, because it's like that shedding process where you don't move and you just sit there and, you know, yeah. like, ugh, I just want this to be over with. Um, so the fact that Melinda is currently having that aspect for third and ninth house, and the third house rules siblings, I find very interesting for you. So we may be on the brink of something wonderful, Turden. Uh, I already have my card. I had one jump, but I okay. <laughs> I had one jump too, but I don't know if I want to take it. <laughs> I did it. I was like, bitch, you go back in the deck. <laughs> We're doing this away. <laughs> I'm so glad you all have that too, because I have this card, and I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know. If I'm not sure, I put it back in. <laughs> I was like, I'm it's just gonna do two. Me, goes... me too. And usually, I wait for it to like jump completely out of the deck, but this one, for example, like flipped over, showed itself to me, and then flipped itself back round and wanted to go back in, and I was like, No, it's you. It's you. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> it's white people put it back. <laughs> <laughs> but that's never keeping myself so heavy. So <laughs> it's not white people. <laughs> I'm keeping it now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are we starting with me again or should we start with with Puff this time and go the other way? Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I almost had to stop myself from singing the Powerful Girls theme song. Um so you, for me, hold the Knight of Swords. Now I want you to look at this bitch carefully, right? Take her in. This is a strong ass bitch, okay? And now this is the Knight of Swords. You hold this in upright. The Knight of Swords is all about being a very, very, how to word this? The Knight of Swords is a strong communicator. It's about direct, intentional communication. That's what this thing. This is intentional communication. If you feel like this is bleeding out and this is affecting other people, you do have the power, the power of words, to kind of control where this energy goes. You know, you can still let it out, but you can manipulate it and you can, you can control to the fact that you're not going to hurt. Okay. And that's absolutely fine. Sometimes we do have days where it's we're being overly critical or we have periods. And it's fine. Just know that you can control this. This is not out of your power. This is not out of anything that you own. Just communicate. If you're having a bad day, tell people. Like, don't let everybody walk around thinking that you're a bitch just because you're having a bad day. One bad day doesn't make us a bad person. So yeah, intentional communication for you. Very interesting. I think that ties in very well to my card as well, because you drew the druid. 
um, which says at the bottom, hold the space. Um, and as we know, druids were, they worked in circles, they worked in groups, they didn't do things alone. So being connected with other people right now is a good thing. Um, I don't think you should kind of isolate yourself to deal with the problem. I think that would be more detrimental. Uh, but the druid is about digging deep within yourself and kind of trying to stay there for a bit like you have to be a bit more introspective why is this going on um if you're wondering what to do next if you have a uh, anxiety then it's time to shift perceptions it's time to to start trusting yourself more I don't know if trust is the is the source of the issue, but it can help you. Um, but also at the same time, like like Puff said, don't do anything drastic. Don't do anything like immediate. Like this is in your control as long as you maintain that calm, that calm flow, a calm vibe. Okay, um, and just let things happen as they come. I don't think yeah. Too much control, not good. Too little control, not good. Beautifully said. Because like with that control, you have to be open to allowing the energy to move freely, you know, trusting with it. Because what I have for you is that project, that person, that idea, it's waiting for you. So go after that shit. The world has your back. Even if it doesn't feel like it, the universe is only going to be moving you in two ways where it can where you would be better suited. And sometimes it's like having that surrendering to the energies of the universe, right? Whether it's like uncomfortable or not, sometimes that uncomfort is needed for that growth. Because healing is not gonna be linear. You'll like, for, for this just a little bit of me, I've struggled for like a three year depression where I was by myself with no one around me, but I took that time to heal. And even some days, like I still have like relapses of that time where it's like, th there'll be a day, right? And I just, I'm in a funk. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that, I'll accept the feelings, I'll let them flow, and then the next day I tend to feel a lot better because I didn't hold it in, or I didn't, you know, hold myself back from feeling what I was feeling. If Negativity that helps you well. is how we grow. If you're just having good days all the time, you ain't gonna learn shit. Because everything's just fine and peachy and perky and everything. The bad feelings, the bad emotions, the bad days, that they're when we learn about ourselves, so don't be afraid of them. So, for me, uh, two cards came out, and I would like to read both of them because I believe they are very related. The first house, the first uh, card you pulled was the fifth house, aka creativity. Um, so you're asking, how can I stop? Um, I think Marco's card said something about that project, that person, that idea. Um, allowing yourself to play again. The fifth house it represents children. It represents it's the house of Leo, which is New Moon and Leo. Uh, Leo is all about letting yourself shine, what makes you happy, what lights you up, what gives you passion, how can you play again, how can you let loose, it also rules sex, it rules, it rules playful sex and like flirting, that, that fluttery feeling you get um, when you get really interested in someone or something, um, so allowing yourself to not take yourself so seriously, not take life so seriously, play, ease up a little bit, I always tell people unclench, lube it up, preheat the oven, you know, just <laughs> relax. And maybe you do need to get a little deep, Um, because you also drew Mars. And oh, Mars yeah. it represents passion. It represents action. It, this is a reminder. Right now, you may feel like you need to fight for the child within, because the fifth house is children, our creativity. And Mars shows that you're kind of at a, a conflict with something, it, whether it's internal, external, whatever. But there's a conflict that needs to be that is happening and you may feel like i'm fighting for my inner child and mars also rules sex so maybe a little more passion giving yourself playfulness doing things that help you feed the fire um are going to be very helpful for you and the, mars is also a reminder of control because mars is our planet of control and it shows that you are in the driver's seat when it comes to your creative life and self-expression um that you need to Yes, sit back and be introspective, but who am I and how can I actively show up in the world and show people this is this is who I am and fucking take it or leave it. You know, very childish, very flirtatious. Have fun. Unclench. 
loop it up. Diddle a fiddle. You know, DJ if you need to. <laughs> do what you need to do, mama, but have fun. You need to become a magical girl and get your wand out. Go for it. Don't let that her child make a dope decision. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright. The chemicals coming from Melinda is making me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sister. <laughs> I forgot that temporarily. Shame. <laughs> I just told your sister to get a magical girl wand. But okay. It's okay. Alright. Um, for me, I kind of know a little bit more, I guess, about the situation. And this was the first card that popped out, and I was like, oh shit, it's the Two of Cups. So, oh. yeah, like, you had said, like, this has been affecting, like, your current relationships with other people. Um, and I was like, shit, here we go, Two of Cups. But, yeah, so affecting, yeah, the relationships with other people, affecting your romantic partnerships, um, affecting how other people probably view you because you are coming out across maybe like a little bit controlling just because you're trying to like protect yourself in a way or something like that um and then it was the freaking ace of cups that came out next so for me this represents more of like forgiveness for yourself forgiveness for other people forgiveness for like the way you were raised forgiveness for everything that comes along with that that's kind of puts you in the position that you are in now like letting go a lot of that i think is something that will lead to a lot of healing like way easier said than done for sure but i do think there is a certain element here of forgiveness that needs to happen in order for you to let go and move on yeah Oh, is it my turn now? Yep, you Timish. Oh man. Well, I'm glad I didn't put the card back because it does actually make a lot of sense with what everyone else was saying. Um, especially like at the beginning part where everyone was like, you know, you can't do this alone. You've got to interact with others. And then Melinda pulls the fucking Two of Cups, which of course is all about our interactions with others. Um, and then going back to both Princess and Margot, it's about that fun energy, finding something you're passionate about. And I think this card really does tie it all together. We have having tuna sandwiches with my favorite honkies. <laughs> that was a honky. <laughs> a slur for a white person. <laughs> so they still appeared. <laughs> I told you it wasn't white people, but it was white people. <laughs> too close to white too people close. <laughs> the point that i would like to make here though is this the energy of this card is it's very subtle right it's it's not like going out and doing something like grandiose it's having lunch with your closest friends there's a very casual energy to this card <laughs> um and i think that that's very important that you interact with your friends um i also want to throw it out there that um I forgot his name already. Puff. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Thank God he isn't here. Um, <laughs> uh, Puff pulled the, you know, Knight of Swords, which I kind of wanted. I don't. I don't like stepping on other people's readings, but I do want to point out that that card is Gemini, and Melinda's a Gemini, so like that could be a thing. I don't know. Maybe this is something that your sister can assist you more with, but I definitely think camaraderie is the is the biggest vibe here. Um, and the best thing you can do to heal this inner critic is to share that with others. Be like, look, I'm not trying to be a bitch, but, <laughs> you know, like try to, if you feel like you need to critique someone, try to just soften that blow somehow. Um, it's what I do. Virgo Moon, of course I'm going to critique. And then fucking Cancer Stellium, I feel like I have to be your mother too, you know? So, like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, but it's about softening that blow. So that way you don't completely come across as too busybody or too nosy, you know? Boundaries, boundaries are very important and not your boundaries, other people's boundaries. You gotta respect theirs. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Fix me, Kate thinks Tibish said so. Yep, that's all on you, Melinda. Your job. <laughs> Melinda's gonna send us the bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've got for you. I hope that that makes sense. I hope that that resonates. Humanize your critic. You're welcome. Thank you for letting us read for you. Uh... Thank, you thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Not Pua. Okay, Pua. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get out, get out the mud. <clears throat> I got the deck. Get out the spikes, the mud, the the hot coals. Oh, yeah. Rough. <laughs> likes She's like Right. She's yeah. like no lube. Just go in. No. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> oh, it came to me yesterday. And, and was like, oh, can I have a green beer? Was like, yeah. I will say this though. The cancers um, are all being, they are all in a dry spell of intimacy is the phrase I will use. Uh, just according to Astro. They're feeling a little bit ready. <laughs> right. Am I? <laughs> are you? I I got so much shit going on. Like, love's the last thing on my mind right now. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. You guys have just that. been deprived of intimacy. Oh my god, the first card. You only need a but cuddle. You know what? A one night stand or a cuddle, man, that does sound kind of nice. I had one jump for you, Pua, and I was waiting for you to tell me stop, but this is fucked up. I've never gotten this card, and it's fucking rude. All right, are we back to me first? Or mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and this is just general, right? Yeah. I've never been described as dry before. <laughs> <laughs> well then, all right. So the card that I pulled for you here, Pua, is the Three of Cups. So... <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I know, right? I don't want to say it, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Listen thyself, bitch. No, uh, Three of Cups normally is about like celebrations with friends, hanging out. Um, it can be also that you are not like celebrating yourself enough or like not realizing like how far you have come or like celebrating the little successes that you've had along the way. Um, this also is kind of infamous as being like the third party card, so I don't know if that applies to you in any way here Pua but yeah third party doesn't necessarily have to be like another person in a relationship that you're interested in it could be like a parent or somebody who doesn't approve of the relationship or something along those lines as well but there you go three of cups so princess I think is next Oh, me turn? Okay. Yeah. Um, for me, me your cards jumped. <laughs> your cards <laughs> jumped out. I have uh, the Taurus card. Um, I have, and I know this is your moon sign. We love the Tauruses. Um, this has everything to do with yeah, self love, self admiration, self value, realizing um the worth you have, just existing as a human being, um not doing anything, not practicing anything, just the value you hold as a person. Um. And just remembering that during this time and how can you cultivate that people that value themselves don't treat themselves badly they don't they don't think badly of themselves they don't they take care of their physical body they take care of their spirit so this is all about taking care of you because you matter and because you are valued you know what i mean princess needs her pedicure very that vibe i love that you pulled that card because it goes very well with the one that i pulled well the one that jumped really you look like a shit show <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're, you're a hot mess. Fact. Clean yourself up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've never gotten this card. I didn't even know it was required. But it's it's giving me a lot of self care, a lot of empress energy, a lot of you know, time to give that love and support you give to other people. Time to return yes. that to yourself. Pick up that mirror and be like, uh, prudent. 
<laughs> be like, I, I was like combining Pua and, and turned into his name. Be like, Pua, you're amazing. You're beautiful. I love you. You're worth it. Looking in the mirror and saying those things. Very that. Ooh. Like, if you saw my leg hair right now, leg hair is beautiful. <laughs> Embrace it. Yeah. And I got a really similar message as well. Like, here we have music, right? And you're in a desert, it's barren, it's dry. Who cares? Just go out there, have fun. Listen to music, make music. Be around musicians. They will bring you a lot of joy. Look at the moon. That This is really about you. The moon's in the background, Cancer. And I, th I feel like... You can get a lot of healing. If you look at the violin, there's like growth. There's like plants and stuff coming out of it. Um, but there's also, I would associate this with Melinda as well, because Melinda's a, a strings player. So what Melinda said is super important as well. It's but like get out there and have fun. Enjoy yourself. Can we get well, a name, man? <laughs> I'm going to carry on the train. Um, this message, unfortunately, is going to come from me, so it's going to come across a little bit aggressive, but just know that I love you. Okay, you pulled the Knight of Swords again. Now, we've seen this from this specific deck already, but we're getting a different vibration from this one, okay? So, I already said that the, the Knight of Swords is about clear, intentional communication. This card is popping up to say, bitch, open your mouth. If there is something that you want, and there is something that you want to communicate, say it. Don't hold back, because you are a strong, opinionated bitch. And you have the power to put your message across, so do it. Don't don't sit there and be like, oh, it's fine, everything will be okay. No, you want something, get it. You need something, ask for it. Take it. And God, I know that sounds so aggressive, but I love you, but I purely mean it out of a message of love. Like, if you've got something to say, honey, let it be heard. 100%. And that's all I've got. I'm going to stop sharing it. Puff, if you need to be validated on the aggression. Everybody else's message, I was like, what the fuck is this? And then yours came up, and I'm like, it's so obvious. <laughs> we have... Clearly asking for no cucumbers <laughs> on my salad, and yet here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> you want a salad, but you didn't order cucumbers. You let a bitch know. And you take that salad back and you throw it in the. No, t t t be nice to your service you throw workers. Throw it in please. her face. Okay. <laughs> Tell Tell it. Please be nice to your service workers. I cannot stress that enough. No, but in all seriousness, uh if you want something, you have to speak up. You have to speak your truth. You have to speak what it is that you are that you need right now. And if everybody else is to be believed, what you need right now is a lot of self love. The mani pedi, get that massage if you can if you can afford it. You know, treat yourself, but make sure it's what you want. Okay, mm -hmm. because it's no good if it ain't what you want. That no cucumbers! That no actually cucumbers. ties in really well with what you just said, Pua. You said you got Bumble back, right? Bumble is an app that is all about the women messaging first. And I'm not saying that this is purely about your sex life, purely about your love life. This should be about all of your life. If you want something, say something. But if getting an app back that means you got to message the guy that you want first ain't a sign. Like, go get it. Go get it, sis. But with no cucumbers. But with no cucumbers. <laughs> Cucumba. Cucumba. I love that video it so means much. It minerals. <laughs> Cucumba. It's so, you if y'all haven't watched that video, oh my god. We love him. I love that man so much. <laughs> Me too. Is that, is that the man that says, Blue Crystal? Yep. <laughs> and Thank Mish, you, I'm, so, I'm so happy that you also got like a fairly aggressive Connor then because I was doing mm -hmm. the same as you listening to all these positive messages of affirmation and I'm sat here being like my car just wants to shout at this bitch <laughs> I literally <laughs> called her a fucking mess <laughs> I don't think that was so loving <laughs> but y'all right 
it, it was it was a little bit of that that harsh love yeah. that mama love, mama love. <laughs> mexican mama love be like why you look like that <laughs> and it looked like shit love. honey we were about to get the chancleta out like we were about to <laughs> not the chancleta <laughs> <laughs> Apples inside that says just general. Okay. Another general. Hold on, there's a whole last paragraph. There's a scene I'm... in the movie Charlie Wilson's War where the CIA guy says, I paid a witch $80 to put a curse on. Basically. Does that sound like the typical CIA case officer to you? I don't get it, but I'm here for the chaos. <laughs> me getting, getting arrested for exes. <laughs> oh. Um, Apple Insider, would you yes. like tarot or rebel deck? I'm shuffling the tar the, the, the tarot. I'm shuffling the rebel deck because I'm assuming. Also, Apple, let me know when to stop shuffling. I'm just going to assume the rebel deck is it what everybody wants today. Okay, we have a jumper. I do Same. Oh, my, before I even knew it was general, it was just like, here you go. That's the message. It, it happened when they said stop too, so that was perfect. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh -oh. I thought this was a sweet one. It wasn't. Mine isn't oh. sweet either. This is too. Melinda, many. are you gonna go first? So we can go the other way around. Um. I think it is it my turn. Yeah, I think it's Puff's turn. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Just let me get the card, because she don't want to cut. This is too many. She said, I'm a shy. I mean, it's not I... even that. It's they're all being like, I want to say something, but I need one, you guys. I almost feel like I should go first on this one. Do it. But <laughs> if you feel so, like you got to, do it. Because this is... It, it's so big. It's an emergency. It's a poop emergency. <laughs> <laughs> In a general <laughs> reading, to me, this says, like, stop what you are doing. You are about to shit yourself, okay? <laughs> there is something coming out that gate, all right? The dam is about to bust. Not the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my sign? <laughs> there, is, oh, there is something that needs attention right now. Mm. And <laughs> if you let it go... It's going to be more of a problem. And that is what I have for you. And I hope that that vibes with everyone else, but not the help side. Your tone clip. You are about to shit yourself. <laughs> I'm going to be mad. <clears throat> okay, right. I've completely forgotten about my actual card. I have it. I just. <laughs> it's reversed. Hold on. Oh. Not the turtle. <laughs> the turtle alert. You are about to shit yourself. <laughs> I, I just shit my pants. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, right. So you pulled the world in reverse. Oh, sure, you're right. Um, but this, and I'm gonna read it to you. I'm gonna read it because it's actually beautifully well written. Um, if you're finding it difficult to let go of something that was once important to you, remember that endings can be healthy. Sometimes you need to close one door before you can open another. Who knows? The next step might lead on to an adventure more wonderful than you've ever imagined. Now, I have a way to link this to what Timish said, and it's going to be mm -hmm. a little bit uncouth, obviously. But why do we need to poop? To expel the waste, right? To expel the stuff that we don't need in our body. To expel the stuff that is not helping us. We have gotten as much, as many nutrients and as many vitamins out of that food that we can. And now the rest is just useless. So we get rid of it. That's what this card is saying. It's backing up what Timmy said. Sometimes, sometimes you got to get rid of the shit. And that's okay. It's time for a clear out, essentially. Evacuate. I'm gonna stop now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now so I don't make any more shit. No, we can't stop. Trust me, it's not gonna stop because <laughs> it's not. Because my, I got, I got two cars at the same time, and the first one is pressure. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
So there's a huge transformation here for you. Like, there's something you can get this po turd polished. Like, there's something <laughs> from the bad you can make something good. And the next card is speed. Like, you need to put on the pressure, <laughs> make it quick, and walk away. Like, it's it's gonna be a bomb. So there you go. What deck are you using, by the way? I've never you seen that deck. Pressure <laughs> it's beautiful. I know right? her. She's gorgeous. Every time She's I see her, babe. I'm like, oh, I'm about to click purchase. What I, what I have for you, Apple, it's time to take accountability. It's not everyone's fault. It's yours. If you shit yourself, it's on you. You're a grown ass adult. Stop blaming others for your shit. <laughs> yes. Things have happened to you, perhaps, that have made you react or act a certain way, but that form of survival is no longer helpful to you. It's time to take that shit and let it go. You know, forgive yourself for who you had to be to, to survive. But now it's time to be a little bit of a grown-up, heal that inner child, and stop letting that her child make adult decisions. We're adult typers. <laughs> Honestly, not powerful messages being delivered under the guise of shit. Uh, uh, I'll go on adult. Yeah, so for the, the card you pulled for me is Saturn, which is truth. Saturn has a... Um, it's the planet of black and white. It is the planet of repetition. Saturn is very ruthless. He ate his own babies. I don't know if yeah. you know the story, but he yeah, ate he his did. own children. He really don't got time. But he is the father time. Very interesting. <laughs> but Saturn has a lot to do with karmic blockages. It represents um, stillness. It represents blockages and karmatic patterns that we are repeating that we need to break. And Saturn goes, okay, if you didn't learn your lesson, bitch, I'm going to bring it back around one more time. Like, if you didn't learn your lesson, we're going to do it over again and again and again. I have time in this life, the next one, the one after that. So um, when we see this card, this is a lesson that needs to be learned. This is a... Uh, everyone's face is fucking... <laughs> confusing me. <laughs> I see everyone laughing. What is it? I just see people laughing. And so, this is about you learning your lesson and expelling whatever... What needs to be expelled so that this can be the last bomb that you need to... You know what I'm saying? So... And I think it's very interesting <laughs> that Alex pulled a card that says fast because Saturn rules being slow, being blocked. And so, this is the final time. Saturn is asking you... Did you learn your lesson this time? Because if not, we can do another shit bomb. Does, do you want to make this the last one? Or are you going to learn your lesson? So. That's a good thing, too. If you don't learn your lesson, it's just going to keep coming back. Yeah. 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 I want to jump in real quick, see, like, just because. Um, mm -hmm. Saturn is the ruler of the tarot card of the world. So just wanted to throw that out there, that there is a connection. Not our decks being the same. <laughs> Also, <laughs> I always call Psycho Saturn sister. the asshole of the sky, so... Yeah. She is the asshole. He, he was... doesn't... He but wasn't the thing good. about Saturn is it's all about reward. When you see this card, this is about sticking true, remembering the plan, remembering the foundation, mm -hmm. remembering that if you can be steadfast and diligent, because this represents Capricorn, and Capricorns are some diligent ass people. People who have Saturn, Ca Saturn or Capricorn rising, they've been through a lot of life lessons that feel karmatic, that feel like when they move that because saturn's a big ass planet but when saturn moves it's it's like a big weight off of your chest so are you willing to let go of this weight are you are you ready okay Amen. i think i'm the Preach. only one left right yeah um, yep. saving the best for last all right so yes. how to relate this to shit and poop um <laughs> <laughs> that's, i have that's the theme of the <laughs> the nine of wands so Apparently that shit hurt a lot and you put yourself behind this um, barrier to protect yourself from further shits. Um, but the thing I like about this Nine of Wands specifically though is like normally it's a guy with like a bandaged head. Like he's like, oh my god, this sucks. I'm going to protect myself forever. This person is like behind the wall is like working out and getting stronger in order to break out. So... I do like that this card takes that spin, I guess, on the Nine of Wands instead of, like, embracing, like, the poor, I'm hurt, blah, blah, blah stuff. This card is, like, oh, I'm going to use this time to, like, better myself in order to push past this wall. So, push past the poop. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I can't believe that genuinely hidden in that <laughs> reading, in all of our cards, were actual messages for you. And I am so, so incredibly sorry. <laughs> Of this emotional constipation. <laughs> of this constipated read it. I told y'all I had to go first. I just felt it. <laughs> yeah. You I felt, felt it in I my bowels. Finish. I have never, ever, ever had a reading like that in my life. That's what happens when you invite me on. <laughs> Be prepared yeah. for more surprises, bitch. I still regret nothing. <laughs> you say this now. Now. I, I, we've got time. Jay's not over. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Apples Insider. Maybe... Mm. No. Mm. No. Oh, are we? Maybe it's the apples you need to change. They're not fibrous enough. Fibrous? Fibrous. It's apples Insider, yeah, that's gonna... <laughs> It's gonna cause a blockage, mama. <laughs> Petition for Timmy to throw the water on himself at the end stream. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like a wet t shirt contest, and we just start playing like Careless Whisper while he douses himself. Careless <laughs> <laughs> Whisper. I was about to drink straight from the bottle. What kind of stream? Ooh, we have a first love reading, a general love reading. Mm. Ooh. Turdits coming up with the drag names. Oh my god. <laughs> They're so good, too. <laughs> uh, Phantom, do you want the tarot or do you want a rebel deck? You don't have a choice. Love that. Let's go. Love deck. Oh, no. No. Tasha Salad. Yeah. Tasha Salad? <laughs> I'm dead. I always think that my drag name is pretty good because it makes people think. I... For the longest time, I was going to call myself Sustenance because you need me to survive. And I love that. I had one word, like, did y'all ever remember that uh, Irma Gerd? Yeah. Mm. That would have been my drag name, Irma Gerd. Irma <laughs> Gerd. <laughs> The best drag name in existence is Karen from Finance. Karen from Finance, and it's so good! That is her official, professional, working name. And she's Australian. She's an Australian, and I love... yes. Yes, she's on Australian Drag Race. Welcome to the stage, Karen from Finance. <laughs> I love that. And there's gotta be like, like uh, Betty from uh, Accounting or something. I'm not from HR. <laughs> oh, thank you for the raid, Dan's. <gasps> hey, Dan. Thank you. Oh, yeah. interesting. Dan! Danta, let me know when to stop by typing stop for me, por favor. Por favor, please. Por favor, please. Hello, Rangers. Bagara. Um, we do have a queue right now, but are we full? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's closed. Yeah. We're not taking any more today. I'm so sorry. It's just because we have a special, special bunch of readings at the end of today's stream. They'll take up a little bit. A lot of it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bit of time. Uh, who's going first? No, yes. I guess it's um, me, isn't it? I think so. Sorry, but for was... Garrett. If um, you want any readings from us, Streamlabs has just, you know, put, um, Mango did it actually, has just put our Discord. You can message us in any of our little private Discords if you want a reading, anything like that. You know, we're all in there. we can stay up to date for the next Super Street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting, Melinda. No, you're okay. I was like halfway spacing out there for a second anyway, so that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so fun sometimes. Alright, so for Phantom Punk, I drew a Love Oracle card and I have the Game Face card, which says taking things very seriously, the competition, the look, in it to win it, fake it till you make it. So, 
um, Phantom Puck, I feel like this is kind of saying if you're feeling like off of your game when it comes to like love or if you are feeling like, um, I guess like some kind of like internal like insecurities and things like that. It's the fake it till you make it part, I think, that's sticking out the most to me in this situation. Like even if you don't have like the most self-confidence when it comes to like relationships and stuff, just like remembering that you are trying your best, putting your game face on, like not letting things get to you, things like that, I think is the message that I'm getting from this card. So yeah, I guess we'll go to princess. My card doesn't want to come out. No, we can come back, I guess, maybe. Yeah, come back to me. What I have for you is the king of stones, which is similar to the king of pentacles very much in this situation it's calling upon what what traits you can use in that situation from the king of stones um taking into account how consistent consistency and reliability are being portrayed by yourself and other people around you especially in terms of relationship you know is someone being consistent with you is this uh whoever you're looking to have a, a relationship with are they chatting back are they giving what you are giving that also it's not being worried about what you, what you don't have like oh i don't have a nice car and i'm not going to get attention for that or i don't have this so i'm not going to get that but what can you do with the skills you've learned in the meantime focus on that and use that in into the situation harnessing your abilities mm -hmm. um yeah i really very much agree with melinda maga you pulled the full moon in virgo so we have this very super critical mindset that you have towards yourself of not enough, don't have enough, could cannot be enough for someone else. So the full moon in Virgo um, is telling you the opposite. You are good enough. You are. It's just your mindset is not in the correct place for for relationships, for love. For, it's not in the correct place, and you need to start out of a place of self-love first so the good thing about this card is a full moon which means it's the end of the cycle the end of the cycle has come to tell you time to stop this self-deprecation this this self-hate and start a process of healing for you because people pick up on that shit and they'll start thinking it's them or something depending on Is it me? Sorry, I was I was messaging in chat. I yes, think Princess so. just pulled a card. I think. Oh no! Yeah, I did. Moment, but I did you got your after. card? No, okay. go first. You go first. Okay. Um. So for me, you pulled the feelings card. Look how gorgeous. And so this card, you can see that she has a cage over her heart. This shows that you maybe are not necessarily in a place to let people in. You're not you're not being very, not necessarily honest, but not very open with the way that you're feeling, whether it's about yourself, whether it's about relationships, you're very guarded right now. And you see how she had let the cat come to play on her shoulder. It's time to kind of let that guard down and see the love and the support that is out there for you when you meet the universe and become more vulnerable that someone's because virgos are very insecure with their vulnerability they're, they don't want to put it out there because they're they're worried about the criticism that they're going to receive because it's all about criticism virgos are ruled by criticism and so maybe you're feeling that if i let someone see how i feel if i be too honest if i start dating someone and i get a little too open they might not like that i might get rejected it's a very logical process to the way that you're dealing with love and your feelings but now it's just time to work from the heart center and be very open, be very receptive and not judge the love that you're going to give and what you're going to receive. Try not to put a, a logical twin thing to it like, oh, what are they thinking about me? What What is the criticism? What is the underlying message? There is no underlying message. Just go with your heart. We don't, Virgos always want words or the tangible for what is so, it's feelings are almost, it, we don't have words. We, it's, it's not tangible. It's not meant for you to make sense of. You're just supposed to feel and go with your heart. So let the kitty come play. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Too much gush, my oh, bad. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Smoker's cough, my bad. Can't got your tongue. <laughs> um, I'm actually really glad that you went before me because my card ties in quite nicely to yours. So for me, you went ahead and pulled a major arcana. You pulled Fortitude. Now, 
look at this lion in the back. This is heavy fire energy. This is heavy Leo energy. But for me, what this card is screaming for you to do right now is this lion right here. He's in the background. You know, the main focus is on the woman, but he's he's still here. This is your inner lion, and it wants you to embrace them. The in a lion is a proud creature. It's the king of the jungle. And it is saying that that inner lion, it lies within all of us. And you need to tap into that right now. You need to be proud of yourself. You need to be here for what you have done and for who you are. Because once you have that confidence in yourself, everything else falls into place. It really, really, truly does. And it's a bit cliche and everybody already says it. But if you can't love yourself, how are you going to love somebody else? Drag race. Yeah. But, we get a gay man. We get a gay man. Um, I'm right here. But um, it's it's all about that. You just have to embrace that. You have to appreciate yourself. Tell yourself that you're a fucking icon, legend, and star once a day before you go about your business, and eventually you will start to listen to yourself. And I love this message for you, and I hope it helps. Sometimes what I've learned in my experience is like when we take care of ourselves, that kind of energy attracts people because it's like, oh, wow, this person really knows how to love themselves. They know how to take care of themselves or X, Y, Z. And so people are attracted by that. What the fuck do I do with this card? Uh-oh. Would you get it? <laughs> and you give it to us. The only thing that kind of makes sense, and again, it's going off of what Puff was saying, because uh, there is certainly a lot of confidence in this card. We have here sucking the milk out of a yak. Okay. Sucking all the milk out of a yak. Excuse me, all of it, gone. Um, to <laughs> me, this just says go for it. Cut out the middleman. <laughs> quit overanalyzing, quit thinking about it, drink straight from the bottle, yeah. as it were. Get yeah. it from the source. From the teat. From no. the teat. Put the teat in your mouth and... <laughs> <laughs> Where's my sign? Uh, we... <laughs> I just got Melinda banned. Anyway. <laughs> you're, not the first, you're not the first one to say teat on my stream, believe it or not. Okay. Oh, well, that that award good. belongs to Nick, but um, <laughs> oh. um, but that's what I've got for you, Phantom Bunk. I hope that kind of makes sense. I feel, like a, feel like it's a little bit out of left field with everything else we've gotten, but um, I think that there is an element of just going for what you want and stop dancing around the issue. Put your mouth on the teeth. <laughs> Make sure you get consent first, though. Consent yes. is sexy. <laughs> Also, Phantom said I have to tap into my inner Jeff Goldblum and then did a sexy purr. And I Who can do the sexy heard. purr? I can't. Did you say Jeff Goldblum? Oh. Was that you, my God? God. Right? Baby. That nose on that man. Y'all know how I feel about them noses. Just everything. Like that, his style, that is a good his voice. You know, he's a Libra. And then I, I'm not when surprised. I realized. Right. And then when I said he was married four times, I was like, it makes sense. It all makes sense. Do you know, do you know <laughs> people <laughs> erect, like they erected a brass statue of Jeff Goldblum? He deserves it. He does, and he didn't know about it. And when he was told about it, he about lost his damn mind. And I'm like, why? You deserve everything that they've given you. He's a precious national treasure. That oh must God. be protected at all costs. We love oh. it. When he cried um, on Drag Race, he was a guest judge. And yes, someone did. did oh. The firework, when they performed firework by Katie Jackie, Perry. Jackie, yeah. He was with Jackie Cox and he cried. Bitch, I cried with him. I was at, oh, I love that man. Anyways, moving on. Addition <laughs> to remove Rue and add Jeff Goldblum. As the... I yes. love me some Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> so thank you, Phantom Punk. And we have Phoenix next. Just a general? Oh, okay. Okay. Just a general. <laughs> we can read it if we try. Just a general. Would you, you like the rebel general. deck, Phoenix, or would you like tarot? I feel like you're feeling uh, rebel, but I'm not. I'm not gonna put words into your mouth. <laughs> I was gonna say something flirtatious there, and I'll save it for the screen. 
Let me know when to stop, baby. Let me know when to stop. And that's a car jump. Oh, oh, hello. Thank you very much, Jay Breezy. My voice also looks you too. When oh, my hello, Stella. Ooh. Ooh. Hi, Ro. Okay, so it's a good card, but it's also a call out. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, who's first this time? Is it me? I think it is you. Okay. Just check in. Thanks for clarifying. So, for me, you pulled. Oh, trying not to get glad. The Eight of Cups in reverse. I will show you upright because I always like to. Um, and it's stunning. Okay, so, you know how people say your cup runneth over? Let's buy this card. Um, but in reverse, this can sometimes refer to walking away from a disappointing, like, situation, or maybe giving it one more chance before, you know, you walk away for good. But it's, it's asking you to, to ask yourself, can circumstances improve? Can I make this better? Can this get any better? Or is it a lost cause? Check in with your intuition. This is a very intuitive conversation to ask yourself. Listen to your gut. And it's to understand whether you should, you know, try again. Or if you should release and cut ties. I'm trying to think, because I feel like there is another meaning to the reverse of this part. I can't remember it and I'm very sorry. But go with what came to me, because if it came to me, then that's what I was supposed to tell you. Jesus. And if I remember anything else, I promise I will tell you later. Uh, so is that <laughs> it from you? Okay. Yeah, that's it from me. I'm so sorry for the five by that one. No worries. So for for you I used the psychic. I brought out the psychic deck for you, Phoenix. And you got the mirror. And no one has pulled the mirror before. Because I'm I have to read this from the book because I have no idea. Um, oh, that's pretty. It is a pretty mirror. I'll keep it's it on pretty. the screen. So you can see. Okay. So it says that the mirror is a gentle reminder you need to, to pay attention to your thoughts as they are manifesting and returning to you. The mirror can reflect the consequences of negative and positive actions. Um, but there, there's several meanings to the mirror card. So a mirror is a reflection of how you currently appear and are perceived by others. The spiritual meaning is of truth and enlightenment. In order for a mirror to reflect, it requires light and illumination. So this is really about your spiritual path. You're like a mirror and you have the ability to be an illuminated, enlightened mind who reflects the light of the universe. You're a true spiritual being who can create and reflect positive experiences into your life, but you can also do the opposite. So you have to be very careful about your mindset. Where is it? Is it more positive today? Is it more negative lately? Because this is what you're going to attract. You have that ability. So think of it as 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 a sign to to really reflect about what's going on and when it comes to attracting what you want be positive about it because it will come to you and i really quickly just just hop in because i remembered what else i was trying to think of and mango's reading actually affirmed this for me um the eight of cups in reverse is also telling you to listen to your heart right now this is all about following your heart your intuition your gut your instinct this is about listening to yourself and what your inner self is screaming out to tell you so that is the other thing i knew there was something else for game um but apologies for that you're good Mark. i have something literally similar to mangos 
some good shit is about to happen. <laughs> so, don't let your issues fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was a double whammy. I thought it was a positive one, and I flipped it over, and I was like, oh, shit, it comes with a punch. Okay, okay. <laughs> so this is something we've definitely talked about before, Phoenix, or I've heard you talk with others about as well, how with cancers we get in our, in our, in our minds and in our emotions, and, like, not that, not that the overthinking manifests, but sometimes because it's all we do think about, we don't make room for any other possibility. Like, some good shit's about to happen, so don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up, bitch. But it's hey, so focus on the good. Good shit's about to happen. We love that for you. I mean, mine ties in perfectly too. I, for me, you pulled the the water sign, the water element, which is all about sensing, which is all about um, not getting, not mucking things up with logic, like just going with the flow, allowing a state of flow, which is giving and receiving. You know, so. I mean, and you're Cancer. You know all about this world. So, yeah. The bitch has already got you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I got the Hangman, which for me is the, like, pull your head out of your ass card and realize what is actually going on in this situation. So if you have been, like, not really seeing things for what they really are or been struggling with, like, um... I guess like realizing like the other people have said too, like what qualities and attributes that you do truly possess, like stop like hiding those things is the feeling I'm getting out of the hangman card here. So yeah, sorry, I guess I was kind of blunt there, but yeah, anytime I get the hangman, it's definitely the pull your head out and look at the situation for what it is card. Yeah, so. I, I love that for, for the way you would describe the hangman. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Phoenix says I do not give myself enough credit for all that I have accomplished. So I do need to pull my head out of its ass. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Timish. Y'all, these are really testing my intuition today. <laughs> um, yeah. You got all my dead sisters? <laughs> that makes sense for me. <laughs> you understand why? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Phoenix is a is a medium, so like. Oh my uh... god! <laughs> you know, and I, I'm so mad at myself because the first thing I thought of when I saw this is you're not alone. That was the only message I got. You're not alone. Um. I don't know. Hope that helps. But that's what I've got for you. <laughs> Did not know you were a medium. Makes sense now. Yeah. Like, all my dead sisters. Like, all my dead sisters. <laughs> fucking duh. Like. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Monk at these hydrates, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> she is making sure. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna need to pee right. so bad after this. Do you not normally? We can, we can take a pee. <laughs> I mean, that is true. We can take a pee break after all the reads before Timish's. Oh, yeah. How many more do we have? Yeah, how many we more do we have left? We have four more. What's We've awesome? already done six. Yeah. I'll right. have to pee before then, but that's okay. Also, Monk. Of course, this cup is for hamsters. It's an egg cup. <laughs> Drink it out the nose. He has a fake. It has no hole. Oh. It, <laughs> it has no hole. It wouldn't be able to hold it. Can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Anyway, he goes like, I'm from <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Jesus. The Scorpio placements, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's Sariana Rain. Oh, Hi, Robin. oh. and then that's Jen. a dream Y'all have to know, Sariana Rain is one of my IRL friends. Oh, welcome oh, in. I have, Hi. I have known in, her for guest. over a decade. 
Like, oh, like a proper friend, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I just met this bitch like a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sneezed and she was there, and then we bonded like that. That's just how it goes. <laughs> Sariana, let me know whenever you're ready by typing stop para me. What that, what that, this that. I just want to let you know that your name is literally Angelic. It really is. And thank you for letting us reach for you, Phoenix. Yes, thank you so much, Phoenix. What the oh, fuck? Too many. That really is a beautiful name. Oh, oh, Not a is double whammy. <laughs> okay. Oh, and then I'm for we sure. Had two one at a time, people. One at a time. Jesus. Mine too. <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> right? Phoenix. Like... Yeah, we'll call you out whenever you want us to. Yes. All right, so I'm first, right? I think. East. This time. Okay. Yeah, good. I got a card then. All right, so the card that I pulled is the Queen of Swords. Yes. So, yeah. Love the Queen of Swords. She is somebody that doesn't put up with anybody's bullshit. Like, she will cut out anyone that causes drama, like, right away. She's someone that has gone through enough life experience to know, like, right away when somebody is pulling shit on her and, like, does not um, hesitate, I guess, to put up the boundaries. She stabs people in the front. Exactly, Turdance. Not in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So this is definitely saying if there's like any toxic relationships around you or any situations that you definitely feel like are not doing you any good right now to like cut those out or at least set boundaries for yourself so that you are protected from whatever drama or toxicity is going on. Oh yeah. Princess. Okay. Um, for me, you pulled the planet of Uranus. Uh, and right here it says genius. Uranus is a very interesting planet. Um, I think the way Timish feels about Saturn is how I feel about Uranus. Because <laughs> Uranus likes to come to fuck shit up. Uranus likes to come to turn things on its side. Um, it wants to go against the grain. It wants you to look at things from a different perspective. And so Uranus, it, it rules electricity and lightning because Things that are very Uranus themes come like lightning, very quick, very sudden. They strike and then they, things are not the same. So I don't know if you're currently living in a bit of chaos or the situation that you are thinking about. It is not necessarily going to get chaotic, but it's not going to be what you're expecting. Uranus is not going to give you what you expect, okay? that's We want to turn things on its head to give you a different perspective. Um, Uranus, it says genius because in this process, um, of turning things on its head, it it wants to teach us a lesson. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, and Mercury is all about gaining knowledge. And Uranus is just like, yeah, bitch, we're about to fuck shit up. So either you need to fuck shit up, some shit is about to get fucked up, but <laughs> surprises are coming. <laughs> and in the end, Uranus can give us a lot of perspective and a lot of growth because of it. Would it be appropriate to say that Uranus is kind of like the fuck around and find out planet? It's um, very that. I love that. Yeah. You knew this about to be besties. <laughs> Uranus and Neptune are my two that I'm like, can we just. I think that's because I'm a Virgo rising, so I'm like, guys, can we just keep it together? I Mama, love don't come for Poseidon. <laughs> I, and they're I like, sorry, no. Yeah, chaos. Uranus is chaotic. <laughs> but you thrive on chaos, so you should love him. So I do. It's all the Virgo <laughs> chart. Yes, chaos magicians. <laughs> <laughs> what I have for you is to fucking apologize. Seriously, just do it. Maybe even just apologizing to yourself. Also, get some fucking sleep. You're being an ass because you're fucking tired, so face to the pillow now. <laughs> I love that card and it never leaves me. Y'all have no idea. Together. Y'all have no idea. This bitch don't sleep. <laughs> um Oh wow. She was just straight up left at that. She was like, it's too real. It's too real. I'm more <laughs> familiar with, with the vampire lifestyle of Seriana. Me too. I prefer to be nocturnal. I think you've been drawing a lot of like really powerful cards and Mine's not an exception. You got the high priest. 
Dude, this is insane. You got the High Priest, and in my deck, there's the High Priest, and the, there's the... I forgot her name. There's the female equivalent of this. The High Priestess? Um, no, different name. Woo. But anyway, the High Priestess here... Pre <laughs> you made me say it. The High Priestess... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> High Priest here. Okay, it's representing the Divine Masculine. It's like very intentional, very creative energy. It's very... I'm gonna go out and do this. And I think that's the energy that you need to be having. Um, especially around this time. You really need to be the one who's... Using all the tools that you have at your disposal. Using... I don't want to say using animals. That's a bit weird. But like... Relying on... Guides. Relying on... Even people who can help you around you. And like direct them... It to their better self as well like there's a lot of action from your side that you need to be taking is what i feel from this card but definitely tap into the divine ma masculine because divine yeah. divine genders don't doesn't matter who no. what you what you are uh -uh. that's is completely separate um well i'm not about to break the cycle either because as soon as you put the high priest like i'm there's a whole there's something going on right now with this reading because you pulled the sun in reverse like we're keeping it up with the major arcana i don't know what's going on but the sun in reverse is basically it's asking you are you feeling bogged down right now in your day to day because it, there needs to be a switch up there needs to be something new we need some funky we need some fresh energy yeah. You, there needs to be something to just to just tip that scale a little bit and and shake things up. There needs to be a different dynamic. And it specifically says, go out and do something fun. Maybe something that you've not done in a while. Maybe something that you've wanted to try and you never have done. It now is the time for you to do that because there needs to be a shift in this dynamic. Just like Princess and Mango and Marigo were saying, something needs to happen. Something needs to change. Because right now, it's just stuck. Mm -hmm. So, like Mango was saying, and like, you know, Princess said that there needs to be change. Mango said that there needs to be a lot of activeness. It's very much just reciprocate, just re replicating, I can speak, um, mm -hmm. what everybody else has just said. A lot of strong messages. Well, speaking of strong... Ah! Uh -oh. Here we go. Alright, trigger warning, it's about to get political. But we're gonna uh, try to make it not political. Right? Ready. <laughs> we got Meliana Trump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meliana? <laughs> She's here, Meliana. Melania, Meli <laughs> Melanoma, fuck me. Like, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm so awful. Meningitis. <laughs> Trump. Meningitis Trump. Uncle Trump. <laughs> All right, so we're we're not going to get political here. Um, not a fan. Just throwing that out there. But I'm not getting low vibration from this card, so we have to look at the positives of this particular archetype, right? We have ruthless. We have determined. We have, as much as I hate to fucking say it, there's a certain bad or badass bitch boss energy that exudes from her right despite her you know stealing a bunch of different uh speeches and just being you know, anyway um <laughs> supermodel turn first lady <laughs> supermodel turn first lady that's a positive like we can spin that into a positive but there's definitely um there's definitely some power behind this especially with getting like the high priest the sun in reverse um, I'm so awful, I forgot the other cards. <laughs> Uranus. Just needing a nap. Yeah, <laughs> needing a nap. A nap Uranus. Yeah, I got Queen of Swords. Yeah. yeah. And Queen of Swords. Oh, Queen of Swords. Yeah. Mm. Strong energy. Yeah. Clever. So, there's definitely something here about perhaps getting some goals in mind and actually going yeah. for them. Um, because we're going to call you out just a little bit here, Seriano, and I can only do this because I know you. I know you've been kind of tossing around some stuff. You've been tossing around some ideas, but there's been zero action on your part. We got to get some action. We got to go for it. 
just pick something. And you gotta yeah. make that noise too. <laughs> I mean, literally, the, the strong energy of these cards are telling you that you can fully do this. Major yeah. Arcana, my, the rulers of houses, they would not come out unless you could it. And yeah. you had almost all of us. <laughs> Fucking princess, really? <laughs> <laughs> Still white. Yeah. I have a very non diversified uh, Cards Against Humanity collection, apparently. That's just not the ones that want to come out today. I don't know. I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I'm such an ally for POC. I intentionally <laughs> got all the POC reference cards out of there. <laughs> say, really weird. Is it maybe a political statement that Obama hasn't come up yet, Timish? Mm. It's rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> and... It's, it's all rigged. coincidence, I swear. <laughs> oh, they say, yeah, I know, lol. Yeah, that's... I, I think these messages are very clear. It's it's time... It's time. Period. It's, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> time, time period. You got this. Start, Start. your period. <laughs> <laughs> On command. <laughs> On command. <laughs> <laughs> that is a talent I will never possess. <laughs> Not Margo going. Oh, no. <laughs> I hate when oh, I hang out with my girlies and I sync up with them. Because I'll be okay. feeling the emotions and I'm just like, what's going on? Oh. <laughs> I'm on my period. I'm done. <laughs> Asian Maven. Hi, Asian Maven. What is your question? Asian also, thank Maven. you, Sariana. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for letting us yes, read for you. you. I hope it wasn't too harsh. <laughs> As you fans are so fabulously. Fucking I hope it was okay. Sariana is uh, is a fellow cancer son as well. Ah, uh, she Aww. feels it. Okay, okay. Oh, baby. She feels it. Mm -hmm. Oh but my god! But everything said That's... here today comes from love. That is Asian such Maven a good idea, like Maple. A general reading. General <laughs> reading. <laughs> 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 Jordan. I feel like I have to prove myself again, but, but it is. <laughs> It is, it is white. more white on that side, so never mind. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's taken up behind every strong game as a white woman. <laughs> oh my god! I'm disconnecting from chat. Reasons, Bye, y'all. We'll be passing away. <laughs> oh, Michelle, Michelle Visage. <laughs> Very that. Keep relying on that friendship. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready, Asian Maven, by typing stop, and I'll pull a quad, unless we have a jumper. <laughs> yeah, me too. Same. I had a jumper, oh, right off the ooh. bat. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay. Okay, let me click the shuffle. <laughs> now, I kind of love this for you, but there's a lot of messages in this part. It is me going first this time, right? Yes. Okay, thank you, Melinda, for being organized, for I am not. Okay. So, you pulled the Hierophant, or the Hierophant, however you want to say it. Now, there's a lot going on in this image. First of all, not related to the reading, but look at his cute ass sombrero. But related to the reading, I want you specifically to look at what he's doing. He's actually using a Ouija board, right? Now, context on the Hierophant, he is a teacher. He is strong teaching energies now there's there is a lesson to be learned somewhere now i for some reason when i'm looking at this card when i'm trying to feel what this card is trying to help, i feel like there needs to be some learning involved in the spiritual sense maybe you need to find somebody to help the spiritual side you know maybe you need a teacher maybe you need to find a mentor no maybe not even that maybe just someone to help you along in this growth I can see Princess in the corner of my eye, I'm so distracted. <laughs> but it's, there's very much that. But this is a very chill card. I mean, again, if you look at it, he has two hands on the Ouija, and he has two hands that are almost holding up a peace sign. This is a very mellow situation. This is a very easy breezy, take it as you go, don't rush. 
take your time. But there is some growth here to be had. And that's all I've got for you. That was a lot, I'm sorry. Ooh. No, it's pretty good. Um, for you, I drew the new moon in Virgo. So quite opposite to the full moon we had before. The And it's, it's very interesting that you said it's time... Uh, Puff said it's time for you to start learning. This is a new cycle, new moon. And Virgo, when it's in Virgo, it's a time for you to give your gifts to people. Like you've been, you've been in a place where you could be, where you were already receiving a lot of gifts. You, you, you were in the limelight. You were uh, blessed, so to say, like really well. So now it's time for you to give that back to the people who need it, to the people who helped you, and it's to help them. Puff says teaching, I'm feeling like teaching people about how to heal trauma with Virgo. So, yeah, I think that's all from me. I had to, John, but at the same time you said stop, which I love. And you got two good ones. You're a winner, baby. Winning. Oh. You oh. got a good thing going. Don't fuck that shit up. That being said, if you needed another more uh, reaffirming message, you're loved. You are loved. You are here for yes. a reason. Again, don't fuck it up. This. Also, can I just have someone clip, you're a winner, baby, on repeat <laughs> for me so I can listen to that every single day? Motivational. <laughs> my ringtone, my text tone. <laughs> winner, baby. I, I do that for a band command. <laughs> when Margot says you are loved, that is a great segue into my card for me. I used the cat deck. Uh, you pulled an attitude card that says desiring belonging. And so I believe uh, Puff mentioned like getting a, a someone helping you along in this journey. And this the desiring belonging card is about our logical family, about the people we choose to be around. It shows that there may be a disconnect with the, you know, the the home family, but this is about remembering the people that like go hard for you, and that they're here for you, and that you are supported, and that you are loved, um, and that it's time to get back into a community, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's engaging with friends, but getting back into the giving and receiving that is very natural for us as human beings, for for human interaction, for connection. Yeah, this is also like seeking refuge in people that you depend on and that you love and that you trust and the people surrounding you at this time You can trust you can seek comfort in them. This is a kitty surrounded by stuffies or like <laughs> A bee and a bear like he picked his family, you know, he's like I got my dragon I got my bee I got my bear and they're making me feel very happy got right my now bee. <gasps> oh my God, I enjoy. love that <laughs> So know that you you are belong you you belong here. And we love you <laughs> Oh my gosh well, my card ties into all of that shit as well because I have the Knight of Cups. So this is definitely like oh. someone like either professing their love for you or someone who's not afraid to tell you how they feel. Or maybe um, this could be saying that maybe you need to be more open to that as well. Like, I don't know if you've been like kind of blocking off any like offers of love or anything like that or even just being uncomfortable with people expressing expressing any kind of form of like affection towards you like believe it and like accept it amen yeah amen melinda very bad preach so, timish <laughs> tell him sister melinda <laughs> right I feel weird always having the finishing move. <laughs> Finish her. <laughs> this one's surprisingly wholesome coming out of whatever oh. the this is. Um, but we've got being nine years old. Mm -hmm. So obviously everything else here is still valid, but I'm going to take it in a completely different direction. I don't think that this card is vibing with anything that y'all are saying, but <laughs> it's... For me, this is just saying, like, get back in touch with your inner child. Get back in touch with the past. Get back in touch with a time that was simpler. You know, try to find a way to bring that with you in all of this growth, if that kind of makes sense. Bless you, Mago. Thank you. 
But uh, that, that's that's all I've got. I hope that helped. I love that it was still in the theme of wholesomeness, though. I know. Yeah, that's right. so reading was. And, like, sure, the vibe was a little bit different. The message that it had to give was a little bit different. But that's okay, because our cards don't always need to be on the same page. It felt more like bottom-of-the-deck energy, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. It's uh, like something yeah. that needs to be applied yeah. to everything that you all were saying. Inner child. It's an addition. Inner child. Mm -hmm. Asian Maven says that does make sense. It did. Excellent. Thank you for letting us read for you, love. Yeah, thank you so much. Countess. Oh, we have Level a Countess. Deck I love Countess. Okay, what deck are we going to use for Countess? And thank you, Asian Maven. Yes, you're very welcome. Okay. Countess loves the weird decks, so if you have a weird deck, use that one. Yeah, I, was being, I was already checking the rebel. Yeah, I'm picking Nightmare Focus as well. Oh no, what deck will oh, I pick? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> Dimish, you know full well that if you wanted to, you could just 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 pull out the wall of cards that you have. Countess <laughs> says, I've gotten a love reading before, so Today, it's time for it. For reference, I have a boyfriend, everything is going well, but I want to get a guide for what maybe I need to do or what's coming our way. Mango oh. knows the deal. Rebel indeed. Okay. I'm thinking of switching fun. decks for this. Actually. No, we'll go with what's true to come. We'll go with the weird deck. Love reading with <laughs> Cards Against Humanity? Hmm. Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, okay. And let me know when to start for me, Countess, por favor. So that's kind oh. of like a like a like a vibe check on on the relationship, I suppose. This is a relationship vibe check. Yeah. How's it going? Oh. How's the path the looking? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Interesante. Oh. Who's who's I'm... going first? Belinda. Yeah, I think it's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I pulled a love oracle card for you here, Countess, and I got the butterfly which says relationship evolving to the next phase healing the inner child and growth so i do feel like this relationship you're in right now is definitely positive like there's a definitely like a lot of growing together that you guys can do the butterfly itself is like a symbol of transformation so that saying that the relationship evolving into the next phase totally makes sense with the butterfly um the healing the inner child part though like i don't know if that's something you have t spoken with your boyfriend about or if this is something that you guys are like helping each other with but i definitely feel there's a lot of like healthy even like communication within this relationship so i feel like things are good <laughs> hmm. as far as that goes yeah. yeah all right princess Okay, um, for me, I used the cat deck, and I got a seasonal card, which says fall. And um, fall, it says the quiet joy of transition. So you guys may be moving into a new phase. Um, and this is, fall is not really a time for action. It's kind of a time to just sit back and evaluate what we're going into. Uh, I see, I see Puff over there. <laughs> and, so, um, and so just embracing who is close to you and celebrating during fall that's what we like to do we celebrate and we understand that we're moving into a winter so getting prepared but also just enjoying the beauty around you fall is when the the leaves start to change and everything gets all beautiful so i mean just watching that transition and getting really internal with it you know mm. so yes yeah, margo Funny enough, the message that I got literally goes with what <laughs> what Countess had just said as the card came out. She said, sorry, I'm in my head, or I'm in my own mind. Well, get out of it. Get the fuck out your head. <laughs> <laughs> and get in your heart, because it I'm misses dead. you. It's oh. giving me a lot of the sense Aww. that you have a lot of fears and doubts with this relationship, because maybe they didn't go well in the past, and you just don't want that to repeat again. So don't think about it. Because it's good. Enjoy while it's good. Not that it's going to go bad, but you know. Right. Enjoy what you have. This is, like, amazing. Like, everyone's just on the same page. Okay. So for you, Countess, I drew Rotom. Okay. 
Yes! So Rotom has a lot of choices. Rotom can be a fridge, Rotom can be a lawnmower, Rotom can be an air conditioning unit. It can be whatever electrodomestic thing you want it to be. Um, and what's interesting is that the first move, the, it's an ability, it's not actually a move, it's an ability, it's called Roto Choice. And this makes the player go into the deck and look for item cards. So really right, right now you have a lot of choices and what it's art telling you to do is to sit down with your boyfriend Consider all the options, what's going to happen in the future, what could happen in the future. It's a really, like, it's a huge planning stage. Yeah. You're going to move into this new place. Okay, now what? What's next, right? And, yeah, like like Margot said, get out of your head. Get out of your head. It's time to write it down and talk to each other and see where, 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 the, where the best vibe is for you guys together. Hi. I'm so fucking aggressively happy right now. <laughs> so first of all, before we get into my card, I just want to say something that immediately popped up in my head as soon as Rotom comes up, because I love Mango's Pokemon deck, right? So I've been thinking a lot about it. And the first thing I want to point out is it's so amazing, the fact that we're doing a relationship reading right now. Everything's really positive. And you get essentially a choice card. Mama, that's the lover's card. That is my major arcana. The lover's card is about choice, relationship, different paths, doing things together. So I am exceedingly pumped right now, especially because I got the Knight of Spells in reverse. And this is all about reigning in your wild side. And Mona, that is about, it is time. You are settling down. You said that you guys are moving into an apartment together. This shit is going good for you. It's time to take life a little bit slower. Appreciate the time that you spend together. Love the time that you spend with one another and just appreciate how much you feel about this person. Oh, Countess, this is amazing. I'm so happy. Oh, sorry. Not the love witch getting excited that people are in love and happy. I'm, oh. No, like, same. We thrive. Yes. We love, we love, we love. <laughs> And then the Fire Nation attacked. Um, and then the Fire, yeah, okay, Tim is here to us, Prince Zuko, <laughs> then, let's go. Actually, this one, this one kind of oh. goes in with everything. I got it, and I was like, what the fuck do I do with this? And here and everybody else, it was like, oh, <laughs> duh. We got synergistic management solutions. Mm -hmm. The relationship's going fine. Everything on the emotional mm -hmm. level is great. What you have to focus on right now, Period. the objective things the real things, the material things, all right? You're moving to that new apartment, maybe some financial stuff, you know, talk it out. You all, you all, you two, whoever, I don't know how many people are in this relationship, I don't really care, but <laughs> everyone in the relationship is working on an emotional level. Right now, it's time, and maybe this is just my Virgo moon just excited to pop up and be like, analyze, analyze, look for the <laughs> solutions. <laughs> Okay. Logic is the answer. <laughs> yeah. Logic is the answer, and that is the message of my card here. Synergistic management solutions. It's you've got the emotion, you've got that connection, you're on that level. You just yes. you have to analyze and you have to look at the objective things, not the subjective things at this point. And that is where your focus should be. <laughs> We're two so straight persons in this. <laughs> Just two? Oh, boring. <laughs> Just two? Wow. Just the two of us. <laughs> Not my Venus and Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I love that, though. I want to try a party. I love that reading. Not all of our cards are telling telling Countess that she's in a happy and stable relationship. How do you feel about that, Countess? Well, yeah. actually, think. Because you should be thinking now, less yes. feeling. And then once you thought, <laughs> then come back to us with any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, oh, I forgot before as well, but like today's readings, if you had a reading today, in the Discord, we have a section called um, Readings Reviews. Ooh, love Please it. Yes. drop it down. Let us know. And if you feel like you need to Keep drag us, us for filth, drag us for filth. We want to know. Drag so we can get us better. just like we dragged you. That's mm -hmm. what we want. We don't Margaret doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
That Timish guy pulled synergistic management solutions on a fucking relationship? What the hell? <laughs> I, I was about to Google that. I was like, what that mean? <laughs> Not everyone's saying that Powerpuff gay bitch just does, has no idea what they're talking about. They just get overexcited like a toddler. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, for Astro people. Sorry, Melinda. No, as you say, she said she's a Gemini and a Cancer Moon, and I'm the same Gemini Cancer Moon. Well, she's probably born right around the same time as you, because right. I know Pua and Alex have that same sun and moon. Oh, Countess is around my age, yeah. Okay. Uh, general about my age. Oh. Honestly, I'm a Gemini with a Cancer Moon and a Rising Leo, and I'm worried about myself in a relationship. And my Mama, ex you're gonna be is just a chauvinistic fine. piece of shit. I could not imagine. Just fine. Is that yeah, you have a cancer moon? moon. I could wrong? not imagine having a cancer moon. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine either. I'm My cancer is in Lilith, stuff. so if someone fucks up something that I love, it's over for them. I think. So I'm nervous, even though things are going great, you know. Yes, girl, I know. But you just know that you're rising. You're if you're rising Leo side, you're ruled by the sun. Yeah. And so a lot of what you do, a lot of even your relationships, which should be an Aquarius, very interesting, um, are going to have to do with yourself. So if you're taking care of yourself, if you're loving on yourself, if you're treating yourself right, um, Leos have that. They just attract what what they're doing. Similar to what Marco was talking about earlier, when people are taking care of themselves, people are yeah. attracted to that. And that's a very big theme of your life is cultivating your own sunshine and um, not letting that... So. I can see why you're worried about yourself in the relationship because a lot of what you do, a lot of your life is going to be centered around yourself and your ego and how you feel about yourself. So st stop doing that. Stop it. Can I just have cultivate your own sunshine printed on a t-shirt, please? <laughs> All right. And let me know when you're ready, Red, by typing stop and I'll get Red into your a general a bike. Green. It's a general rose? Okay. Okay. What deck? Where did that deck go? Is that? Okay. I thought I'd lost a deck of cards and I panicked. <gasps> oh, stop. Salud. Uh, Hello. <laughs> oh, you were telling me stop. <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm not a car. <laughs> I'm telling you. Every time somebody sneezes, I'm going to say hola. And you guys are going to be like, hola. And we're going to be like, hello. Oh, I'm gonna get so confused when I come to Hawaii. For real. I pulled a really good card for you, Viking. I hope you're ready for all the dragging when I do for you. Well, no, it's more encouragement. Uh-oh. Hi, Jay. I, I got a bit of a dragging one. <laughs> oh, damn it. I'm late to the party. Hold on. <laughs> um, I think Was pink it? is first now. Yeah. I think so. Okay, give give me a second because I'm just checking something. Cause she's reversal. Okay. Well, I can go if you want. I don't care. Oh, good. It's all good. It's all good. I'm just double good. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Sorted. Just needed to check that I wasn't about to spout a bunch of lies at you, but we all good. We all good. <laughs> um. So for me, you actually pulled the five of cups in reverse. Again, we'll show it in a bright, pretty. Now look, look at the brain. She's a labyrinth, right? There's some overthinking going on, sis. There's, there's a lot of, there's a whole lot of thought processes going along about this streaming thing. And I get it, I get it. I mean, I don't get it because personally I haven't been streaming that long. But I've watched what these bitches go through. There are a lot of things to think about. You know, the prolonging of your channel, the, the upbringing of your channel, the development. I understand it. Take a step back and simplify some of those thought processes, okay? Because this card is talking about recent setbacks and failures and disappointments. Maybe things aren't going the way that you want them to. Maybe things aren't progressing as fast enough. That is perfectly okay. Because we experience setbacks and disappointments for a reason. They are here to teach us a lesson. They are here to teach us something so that we can use that lesson and take that information and then go on with our lives with it. Because now, then we know, we know. It's going to be absolutely fine. Don't get trapped in your own brain labyrinth because one thing may not have gone the way that you wanted it to. Because now you know, 
and you can double check why did it not go the way I wanted it to. You can change that and it's rinse and repeat until you get the, the result that you want. It's all good sometimes things just take a little bit of time. That's all I have. Yeah, I think uh, pretty much the same same card I drew. Like as you, everything I would say would be repeating my repeating what Puff said. But you drew the North Node, so streaming is something meant for you. Like North Node is very karmic cycle. Like very, this is where I'm heading towards, right? Um, but when the North Node in this in the Moonology deck comes up, it's more about stepping out of your comfort zone. There's something. Maybe you've been streaming the same content. Maybe it's just it. It's become too comfortable for you now. You need to do something more outlandish, more. Not not that it's not it's not different to who you are, but just. I don't know, like a bit more. How can I describe this? Put yourself in a spotlight more. That's that's what I would say. When I have for you, whether it's for someone else that you need to do this to or for yourself, it's again fucking apologize. Maybe forgive yourself for the things that you that have happened to you, for how you think of yourself, the limitations you put on yourself. But seriously, just apologize. Just fucking do it. Forgiveness. Can you imagine? <laughs> Skip me. My card doesn't want to come out. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> they actually know. They actually know. For real. All right. I got the Page of Swords. So this is definitely somebody who is like not used to dealing with a lot of thoughts that are going on in the background. Somebody that is very curious and has a lot of questions, but also at the same time. That, curio that curiosity can get them in trouble by like sticking their nose in where it doesn't belong. I also feel like with the overthinking part of the Page of Swords here, this could be a little bit of like comparison or like comparing yourself to like other streamers, what they're doing, like getting in your head a little bit about that as well. And that could be holding you back. Um, so focusing on yourself and what you feel like your stream or your community or whatever else it is supposed to mean for you and doing it for yourself and not for like the follows or the views or whatever else you are hoping to get because those will come if you're doing what you are feeling like you're meant to do pretty much so yeah hopefully that made sense her Did you get your okay. card, Princess? I can go. Yes, I did get a card. Perfect. Uh, Yay. So for me, you pulled Gemini, I think. And Gemini rules social media. Gemini rules the communication process. Um, this is about expressing yourself. I like what Alex was saying about multitasking. Gemini wants to try everything. Gemini likes... What did, what did Timmy say about his Venus and Gemini? They, they, they won't say no yet. Uh -huh. Try everything once. It's very that mm -hmm. energy. <laughs> uh, they're very curious. So anything that's been crossing your mind, if you've had a curiosity, oh, I've always wanted to try this, try it. See how you like it. Just try it to try. Um, and the Geminis are all about communicating with people, connecting. Um, and I mean, when it comes to your stream, allow yourself to connect and build a relationship and communicate openly about anything, really. Yeah. Don't tie yourself down. Geminis don't like to be tied down. There, were, there was a reason you had to go right before me, because again, staring at this card, we got words, words, words. <laughs> this card is all about communication, all right? Now, what that means in context of your streaming, all right? Because you probably have the same problem I do, is if there is not a whole bunch of shit going on in chat, you know, if there isn't anything going on, I got nothing to talk about. I'm just going to disconnect. I'm just going to end the, end the stream, game over, because mm. I can't just sit there and talk and talk and talk unless somebody gives me something to talk about, right? So I wonder... Just throwing that out there. Perhaps that is an aspect of your streaming that you need to work on. I need to work on it, you know. Um, but the communication, the teamwork, that Gemini energy, like, I'm really vibing with that right now. Because um, it's not just... I've learned very much that if you're streaming and you're a solo act and you're just trying to do it on your own, like, it's damn near impossible. You've got to rely on other people at some point. Yeah. Um, 
for instance, this, like, I wasn't sure how I wanted to be reintroduced back into the community after my little hiatus. And I remembered, uh, you know, Mango was doing this whole super stream thing. And I was like, oh, my God, that'd be like the perfect time to just <laughs> insert myself back in, you know? Um, and I guess my point there is it's all about the teamwork. It's all about the other people that you keep with you. It's your streamer friends. You know, you got to rely on them. Um, that's what I got, though. Hope that hope that helped. Words, words, words. <laughs> words. <laughs> Las palabras. Beautifully said. Oh, thanks. thanks, Mr. J. And a, a tip that I was given from like someone who has worked their way to partner was it's good to have like conversations, even if it's just with yourself, whatever it's like kind of stream of consciousness, but I know it's not always easy. But uh, like if you're playing a video game, you know, commenting on what you're playing, what, what are your thoughts of, or like, you know, kind of things of like what's coming up and things like that. And um, I was actually watching, because I'm sad and I'm still nervous about streaming. I was actually watching a couple of videos and I can't remember what they were. And if, if I could, I would link them to you. But it's a, it was about people giving advice for, for, for streamers, you know, that are getting into it. And one of the things I heard was practice talking to yourself. If you play video games, talk to yourself while you're just playing the video game on your own. Because if, you're play if your mind is so elsewhere, sometimes you can't see chat. Like I only have a laptop and tabbing in and out of the game that could cause many issues. So today I sat down with an empty house and I was just talking to myself while I played Final Fantasy V. And it feels weird. Mm. But the more you do it, the easier it will become. You know, it's just about practice and getting yourself comfortable in that situation. Oh. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but the not I'm not banned yet, uh, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. As a Gemini, I don't have to practice to speak with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I walk around the kitchen, I'm like, what do I want? I want really? a banana. Mm. Yeah, I want a banana. Gemini rules variety as well. So, I mean, do a really long stream where first you're eating and then you're talking and then you're playing a game and then you're playing another game. Yeah. Who cares? Switch it the fuck up. <laughs> Chaos. Geminis are very Switch cool, shiny. Switch it up, Mimi. <laughs> Switch it up. But thank wow. you for letting us read for you. Yeah, thank yes, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. You have a lovely energy, by the way. Well, geez, I think that was... Was that everyone? Yep, that was all ten. Everyone no for real? Awesome. Except oh, that was the superstar. Anyway. And nobody missed so their we... reading. Yes. Oh. Everyone stayed. Thank you so much for staying, you guys. Thank you for being patient. Yes. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it's very bad, man. Shall we take a break very quickly before yeah, the we next can. stretch? Alright, we will be right back. Yeah, because I'm getting sleepy. Okay. Girl, you gotta go to the club. What you do?
these are cute. Jojo pose. All right, we are back. <laughs> and it is time for us now to read the Timish to Filth. Oh, yes. no. <laughs> they are not ready. So. Now, just to clarify, this is something that we do with our guests, or, I mean, in this case so far, our new members. We will all be doing a three reading for Timish, however many cards you want to do for me. That is that's up to the reader. Um, I need to know, how is this reading going to go? I don't know. I'm <laughs> so pissed. The endangered species Timish. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna die! Not Timish doing a reading about the readings that we're gonna give Timish. I get meta up in this bitch, okay? Yeah, you're picking <laughs> the whole sick book the fourth wall. And then the card is like, it's you, bitch. <laughs> rebel, like, we gotta go rebel. All right, well, you're probably gonna want to stop too, I aren't you? I will be doing a review of, well, just like a mini reading, I guess, for Timish, based off of their birth chart. Um, they so lovingly gave me their birth information a few days ago, and I have just oh. been peeking around in there, so I will not be doing cards. I will be doing Astro, so I don't know how you guys want to do this, or like what order, or... Y'all tell me. Well, I don't have my cards yet, so anyone can go beforehand. Mine go jumped all over. We're good. Okay. Oh, interesting already. Okay. What a beautiful card. I'm oh. sorry, I'm just giving my dog some attention because he's been a needy baby. Me. <laughs> I I also own a copy of the Rebel deck. Um, shout out to Lunar Feather. She has sent me a couple few decks already. Oh, how sweet! And she sent me the Rebel deck, and it has been just—it's so my thing. It's so Is it what it's you such need? a good vibe. It, <laughs> I yes. really want a copy. Like I want a deck. It's, it's such so a good deck. deck. It is so good. <sighs> that and the Glitch deck. I'm still trying to find it. Oh, the Terra Wave one. Yeah. Yeah, I have like that one and the visionary one. Apparently, it's also out of stock now, and I, I hope yeah. they, they can get it back. They, but... They've they've took it off of Etsy now, and they've started their own website. Oh. So they're actually working on restocking because obviously it's been really popular in Etsy. So do I pick who goes first? How Ooh, that might be this? fun. Yeah. Yeah, you pick. You can you pick. if you want to actually. Mm. Not, not be do you want to problem. write your own story then? You pick. You know, I'm I'm just really curious as to what the rebel deck has to say, so I I need to start. With the rebel deck, <laughs> I don't know. I need to, I need to know. My dear, dear Timish. Oh goodness. Laugh. Laugh. Where the fuck go. is your sense of humor? <laughs> it needs to come back. It needs to. I feel like it's been here this whole time, but. Yeah, it's definitely opening up yourself to joy again, you know, after yeah. going through that period of time where it, like, I, I am a strong believer in laughter as a type of medicine. Even, like, when someone else is laughing, you, it kind of gets contagious. Like, I find myself laughing just because I, I, I hear other people laughing. I'm like, what, what was right. funny? I don't know. I'm just going to giggle. <laughs> You, you know, with me, it's like I'll hear I'll hear other people's inside jokes, and I'll be like, "That's fucking funny," and they're like, "No," like, I know I don't know, but it's still funny. I get it. I don't get the context because out of context, it's hilarious. <laughs> Without context, it's great. Oh, now you're gonna give me context? Super <laughs> juicy. Juicy. Let's go with Mongo next. Oh, Mongo. Okay. Okay. All right. Free cards for you. And then bottom of deck. Because I know you like that. I do like oh, the bottom of deck. Oh. <laughs> you said that. I see. <laughs> so your first card is electric energy. Oh. So like you're coming that. from this, there's this like a reinvigoration of your energy, of your, your, your passions. It's very closely related to fire in, in traditional elements. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of energy coming from you now that you're back. You want to put all of this energy back into streaming, back into the tarot community. And you're going to have way more fun than you did before, because Yamper's oh, here in the God, middle. I love Yamper. <laughs> right, Yamper's just here to play, like, fetch. Yeah. You, I, I stole the Pokeball that you trapped me with, and now we're going to go play. <laughs> if you want me, come chase me. And then your last card is fire energy. Ooh. A lot of passion, a lot of creativity. Coming back 
to Twitch is just an explosion for you. Okay. Bottom of the deck is Dragonair. Oh yes. I got chills. Yes. Dragonair is the only dragon card in this deck. The best card. There's like it's it's fate. It's high power. It's being in your highest mystical energies. It's just everything. Dragonair is everything. He's everything. Dragon's Wish is the first move, and it says you may attach any number of energy cards from your hand to the Pokemon. That's a strong ass thing. Any any energy cards you have, you have got, you've got all the energy. You've got everything going for yeah, you. Yeah, because I finally ate that chunk of citrine that Melinda sent me. <laughs> <laughs> Follow it, held with it. Yes. Yeah. My favorite way is just shoving it up my ass. <laughs> oh my god, you know, Margo, I wish I'd made the joke because I was floating between did I eat it or did I shove it up my ass? Just pick one. <laughs> Not no, I got you, baby. I got you. I got you. <laughs> for real though, for real though, 100%. Um, that chunk of citrine now sits front and center on my altar, Melinda. Um, I love that for you. Yeah, and it's right there with the selenite wand. Hell yeah! <laughs> so it's 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 the focus, and it's what I need. And I think Mango's reading absolutely solidified that that was the right move to make. And then I need to keep that energy at all costs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, maybe not at all costs. Yeah, just just to go back, like you got. I know Dragonair is the only card I have, but Dragonair is the middle ground. It's it's not Dratini. It's not Dragonite. You still have room for a lot of growth. Right. Mm. Right. Although, I let's be fair. Who wants Dragonite when you could just keep a Dragon Afro? Fucking honestly, I hate Dragonite. Like, he's so <laughs> cute and derpy, but, like, Dragonair is just so fucking majestic. Right. Like, mm. you can't compete. Like, how did we go right. from... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go with... Because... Okay, I'm kind of split on Princess and Melinda because I kind of want Melinda to go to last, but because Princess is doing like this astrology thing, I think she's definitely going to go like last, last. So I'm going to yeah, yeah. That's fair. So we're going to go with because uh, Puff. Puff. We're going to go with Puff. Okay. So I fucking forgot his name again. <laughs> <laughs> like who are you again? <laughs> Fucking crybaby Pisces I mean, over here. Yeah, that's me, bitch. Right. I cry. Oh, oh Jesus. Okay. He has so many names. Me, though. Like, <laughs> this is true. I have so many names. These guys call me by my real name. They call me by my old name. It's Ping. There's Puff. But Puff is the one that's going to stick because I'm a powerful girl. Real name um, is Callum, right? Yeah. I do need to get in the habit of starting to call y'all by like your real names. I don't know. I feel like we're actually enough. friends now. I know. <laughs> Oh, oh. So no. good time. That's it. Oh, oh. You later. <laughs> Call me when you want. Call me when you need. Don't last me. Don't last me before I okay, read it. Okay, please spend some being a pleaser. I hate us, anyways. Okay. Back to your reading. So, the first card you got is the Ten of Wands right here. Ooh. Now this card, okay. upright. She's coming to tell you that you're on the right. Path. You're doing the right thing, but you've got to keep going. You have worked mm. so hard and you have gone through so much stress and so much effort to get to where you are right now. But keep going. Don't get comfortable. You got this shit. Use what you've already learned and push yourself just that little bit further. Now that really nicely segues into the next little bit because I'm thinking that this is about your streaming. This is about your life, your livelihood in turn. You pulled the heterosexual lovers card second. Now, I assigned them to the sexualities that I feel like they most closely represent, but the energies are very, very different. Now, this for me, and I'm gonna go a little bit gender stereotypical here, so pardon me, it's just the best way I can explain it. This is about your connections that are forming with specifically the opposite do I want to say opposite? The more female, the more feminine, right? Okay. This is the connections that you're making with those. Like we've already said, that doesn't necessarily mean the connections that you're making with women. This is just that feminine energy that you're feeling around you. Right? 
this is about holding on to those fruitful relationships because they can really help build your support network back up right now and it's about trusting in those relationships there's love here there's passion there is genuine trust and it's a two-way system so they if are I'm, here yeah I'm absolutely because something just kind of hit me and uh, I, I gotta get it out or else it'll just die in there <laughs> so I mean obviously I am a gay man shock um really you are gasps and tarot <laughs> made my earbud fall out hang on <laughs> <laughs> you think all extra hair would just stay in there, but Jesus, whatever. No, okay, so I was thinking, as a homosexual, getting the heterosexual lover's card, could that just simply represent platonic relations? Mm. So that's kind of what was, like, coming at me. It's like... Partnership. Yeah. Anyway, it's continue. Thing. Sorry, that's yeah. just a little, little interjection. There. But that lover's card, just to build off what you're saying, because you bring up an exceptional point, this is not romantic. This is not mm. sexual or romantic. This is about your platonic relationships that you're building. Um, but I do want you to be, just take take note of that feminine energy around you right now, because sometimes we, sometimes we need that little bit of, you know, a little bit of like, mama will care for you. Mm -hmm. And in here we come in with the third card. So you've got two good ones. So obviously- Oh my God, they get a third card? I know, right? Crazy. I'm just treating you so special. Um, no. so you know how to you make a girl pulled... special. <laughs> I mean, you might want to take that back after this card. You pulled the oh. Wheel of Fortune in reverse. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm. <laughs> Fuck you. You still call? Oh, the cameras go over one. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I fucking hate the Wheel of Fortune. I hate this card so much. But <laughs> please continue. What message does this card have for me? <laughs> but hey, it's in reverse. You might love it. Oh, that's right. It's reverse. You so it's even more convoluted than it was you before. Won. No, you won. It's even more problematic than upright. Um, <laughs> you've hit a snag. Obviously, we know. Yeah, to put it lightly, there's been a snag, and I used the quote. Um, you've hit a snag right now, but that does not mean that nothing is not going to work. It's just about you need to pick out those pebbles that are clogging up the cogs so they get moving back normally. Makes it's all step. about working way through that. Nothing has stopped. It just needs to be sorted, readjusted, and then we make it. Just a, a friendly reminder. Yeah. yeah. Pick out the hair from the drain. Pick, the as much. <laughs> pick out the hair from the drain. Bury that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, so I gave you two really nice cards, and then the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. The Wheel of Fortune in reverse really speaks to me because I think it's important for me to understand that right now is not... It's not the snag that I think it is. It's not the, the, the downturn that I think it is. It's yes. just a pause, and yeah. I need to... Yes. And that's... That's all it is. That's all very, it's a going. temporary setback. Mm -hmm. Reading for a reader is so fun. Isn't mm. it? It's like you're getting a reading, but they are co-reading their own reading. Me when I get my readings. <laughs> well, In my head, I'm just like, mm -hmm, it means this. <laughs> when whenever I do like private readings, um, I always tell them, I'm not going to read your cards. We're going to read your cards. Yes. Oh, I love, I love that. that collaboration. It's a team effort, guys. All right, Melinda, hit me where it hurts. <laughs> Mike him in the face. Well, I actually didn't pull any tarot cards. I pulled a Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle and then a Grateful as Fuck and Spiritual as Fuck card for you. Uh, I love those, by the way. So, They're so good. Our uh, Grateful as Fuck card is Feminist Men. What? Yep. Feminist men. Feminist man. Be grateful for hmm. feminist men. So, despite the infinite pressure to conform to the dictates of the cult of masculinity, lots of men show their hearts, their silliness, and their fears to the world, and they stand up to misogyny even when women aren't around. 
feminist men catch a rash of shit from the dude bro crowd and probably don't get thanked enough. So thank you, feminist men, for doing the right thing. The world's getting better because of you. See, I told you I was an ally. God. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do you feel have any like. Before? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all these cards that I pulled, like <laughs> some white people, a fucking Trump card, like white people. people. <laughs> It had to be white people, the H-word, and Trump, all in one stream. It had to be. It had to be. Oh Just my god. Margo all up in here. Oh, he's such a good person. <laughs> he's such a great POC ally. He's so amazing. <laughs> hmm, let's see. White people. <laughs> white people. He's <laughs> <laughs> so intense, comes into my stream, he's like, why am I bad? <laughs> oh, what's going oh. on? <laughs> oh my god. But I do think oh, there's I'm a so sorry, Melinda. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But I do think there's a certain amount of truth for you in this as far as like you are not really afraid to like stand up for like what you believe in and things like that. And I think that is something that you need to like keep a hold of and keep with you for right. sure as you come back to streaming, especially. I'm sure you're gonna have to stick or like stand your ground in a couple of places because we all do as streamers like very mm. seven of wands energy i feel yeah um, all right yeah. then your spiritual as fuck card is manifest the fuck out of your dreams oh God, of <laughs> course it is. right so we have the most vulnerable thing to admit is not your deepest wound it's what you really truly want we're talking your biggest, craziest oh, I, dreams I, and desires. Yeah. Be vulnerable, at least with yourself. Write that shit down. Make a to-do list and maybe even tell someone. Make it happen. You can do this. I don't think I need to say you anything know, really, about that one, but... <laughs> the strongest message of tonight, honestly. Yeah, like, arrow to the fucking heart right now. No, because the, the truth is, like, the worst part about everything that I was going through was having to reconcile the idea that I would have to give up to. Right. Because I feel at home here. I feel like this is where I need to be. I feel like this is what I should be doing. And having to give that up, honestly, that was part of what pushed me over the edge. Mm-hmm. Or having the illusion of thinking that I have to give it up, I should say. Mm. Nice. So yeah. you back now, bitch. You back with a vengeance. <laughs> oh, I'm back with a vengeance. I am pulling off wigs. I am clawing bitches' eyes out. <laughs> I am Come on, rising from the ashes. <laughs> All right. Then your last card is a believe in your own magic oracle deck, and this one kind of hits sometimes too, right in the feels. So watch out. We have gold. Oh, that's my favorite deck. Gold. You don't need someone else to fix you. Period. Oh, so here we go. Someone is trying to convince you that you're broken beyond repair. Unless you accept their helping hand, of course. If someone offers to fix some part of you, it's not because they're being selfless or kind. They know that you're in a vulnerable place, and they want to make you entirely dependent on them. Tell them no thank you. You know exactly how to put the gold in your own cracks. I love that deck so much. I know. And that card for Timish right now, my god. Right? Like, I don't know if you guys, can, she's holding like a little cup that's been broken and put back together with gold. Like... That's so symbolic right now. Right? Like... Oh. I have so many goosebumps, my nipples are hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I can Put still some gold in your cracks. <laughs> I'm glad I can still do that cracks. for you, Timish. <laughs> <laughs> you got any gold and nuggets you can send? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, princess, fuck okay. me up. Um. Okay. Fuck I you. see everyone is talking a bit about your streaming. We will get into that. But just yesterday, I don't know. It just hit me that. You know, I'm not really a tarot reader or an oracle reader. What I know is astrology. So I'm like, let me pull, give, let me do what I know how to do and just look at your chart and see what stands out to me. And I know you study a bit of astro too, so we could, 
you know, you can read your reading as well. Different things, though. Like, I, I look at some really weird shit in charts, but... I'm not surprised. We'll, we'll <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not surprised. That Mercury Uranus is strong. Um, so I wish I could show you guys Tim's chart, but we'll just... I have, like, two pages of reading, of writing, and this green is what I added during the stream. Because a lot of what you say, I guess we'll just start with the Mercury Uranus opposition, reminds me so much of that. Wait. And, um, mm -hmm. Was it Mercury Uranus opposition or Mercury oh, Neptune Oh, Uranus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, wait, let me look. It's Mercury Neptune opposition. Right I love the notes too. That's the Virgo coming out. It is very Virgo. Okay. Oh yes, opposite Neptune. My bad. My bad. Um, I have that in my notes here. But okay. So we can start with that. Um, you have Mercury and Cancer that sits right on top of your ascendant, and as you know, um, the ascendant is very important to me in the way I study astrology. I believe it has more of an effect than your sun sign. And so for Mercury to sit on top of your ascendant really speaks to the witty person that you are. And I, that's why I chose the word witty. When I was describing you, it speaks to your intelligence. It says that when people think of Timish, they think of his jokes, they think of the way he communicates, they think of the way he thinks. It's so, it's so quick. Um, the thing with Mercury doesn't necessarily like to be in Cancer because it does make someone <laughs> think off of their emotions especially with that neptune opposition baby we got water on water okay and so um, the problem with a mercury neptune opposition is that neptune is not a personal planet personal planets stop at saturn right and so sometimes you, it can feel like neptune is a collective planet that represents like us as a collective it can feel like the world is against you cancers are very guarded they're very protected and they can get into an, a state of everything is out to get me it, neptune can drown it can drown the mind so you can fall into these watery spells of feeling drowned logically being lost within your feelings um what else did I... um neptune is a very intuitive planet i'm sure you already know this cancer is a very intuitive sign um and the way that neptune mercury people communicate are very interesting they're very calculated like th the person that they're talking to it will they'll guide the conversation based on who they're talking to. So if you're speaking to Melinda, you know she's a little more shy. You're probably gonna be a little more extra because you know Melinda needs a little bit more drawing out of her. Like you say things because you want to provoke a reaction. It's very Neptunian. Neptune likes to receive, Cancer loves to receive. It's very, what can I What can I draw out of this person? Um, Neptune also rules like telepathism. To, mm -hmm. I would like to say that you definitely hit the nail on the head. The way that I communicate with different people, and this is why, and I'm so, this is a big fear of mine, is that people will think I'm disingenuine. Um, I try not to be. But you hit the nail on the head. I I want to communicate with people on their level, you know? Yes. I'm not going to talk to Margo the same way I talk to Melinda. I'm not going to talk to Mango the same way I talk to you. It, yeah. Where I'm going to be a different person when I'm interacting with you all one-on-one. -on -one. And oftentimes that comes across to some people as, oh, he's disingenuous. Oh, he's a different person with different people. But it's like, I'm trying to come at you. You're ruled by the moon. That bitch changes every day. Oh she cannot God. make up her mind of who she is. Okay, you have Mercury in Cancer. <laughs> bitch don't know. Okay, every that day That mutual reception. New. I don't know if you've looked up information <laughs> on mutual receptions, but they're awful. And then mine's attached <laughs> to the fastest planet in our solar system combined with the fastest luminary object down in our sky. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm constantly changing. Well, like, that's what I was going to say. Mercury across of Neptune. Neptune represents like, the, it, it, that's what it does. It dissolves everything, everything. And so you're constantly dissolving yourself, your conversations, and constantly changing. That's kind of what you were meant to do. But the Virgo in you is like, this is all wrong. Where mm -hmm. is the stability? Where is the tangible? Um, <laughs> but yes, um, Neptune and Mercury is a very highly intelligent person. Uh, this is someone that also dealt with a lot of, because Neptune represents uncertainty, right? So this is someone mm -hmm. that gets very lost in their thoughts of, oh, then maybe this person doesn't like me. Maybe this person, they cloud themselves. As I said, Over Neptune clouds. Thinking they, the shit out of everything. Right, very Virgo, very, all of it. Um, mm -hmm. So, but, and the thing about Neptune being in the seventh, seventh house is that sometimes, um, Neptune is the sign of the rose-colored glasses. So in their relationships, in their... Virgo, oh, it just wants to see the good in people sometimes. So even though the Cancer is like, oh no, I am a shell, I am, I am tough, I am hard. At the heart of it, you sometimes give people way too many chances. You give people the benefit of the doubt. You give people... Because Neptune Shut up, Melinda. <laughs> I know! <laughs> oh... 
No, I, I do. Neptune is the dissolver. It dissolves reality. And so Mercury, our logical thinking across of Neptune, you have this back and forth of what is real and what do I feel? But they make me feel good. But they're literally treating me like shit. <laughs> and you're like, but they, but the feeling. So it's this very back and forth of, of, um, like receptiveness, like just so much of you wants to give to others. That's what you're here for, to heal. Virgo is a healer. Cancer is a healer. Um, what else did I write? I don't oh, know this is this... also someone that... Mm -hmm. Go. I was just going to say, like, in the whole healer motif, my fucking Chiron's in Cancer in the 12th house. Like... And you have it in Pisces, baby. You ain't running away from that. You're not running away from that. And Neptune is all about the death. The death two things. So a lot of your birth chart, even though your your mind, your security comes from Virgo things, which are stable, tangible. A lot of your life's focus is about you don't know. You've never necessarily known stability. We'll just say that based off of your no, birth chart. No, okay? I haven't, and it pisses yeah. me off actually because it's like <laughs> I have these friends. You know, the, this guy that I just moved in with. You know, I've known him twelve years. He's been in the same house for twelve years. I haven't had anything in my life twelve years. Like. Yeah. It's just, yeah what other than friendships obviously but like i've moved from apartment to apartment i've held down several different jobs boyfriends fiancés it just ooh, i can't keep any of that shit i can't <laughs> yeah well because i don't think a lot of your life was meant to you be kept if that makes sense like you're supposed to you have a lot of cardinal and mutable energy in your chart not a lot of fixed energy which is not bad. It's a constant state of flow. People give Geminis and Sagittarius the mutable signs, Virgos, shit, because they're not necessarily stable, but they're adaptable. You were born right. to adapt because that's all you know is how to, can I get into this situation and how can I work around it? How can I get into this conversation and work with what I'm working with, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, and yes, with mutual reception, you have your first lord in the third house, which shows that I don't know if you like paint, but the third house rules our hands. So tarot. So painting, so music, music. Um, the, I've even seen this in like mechanics charts, but everything you do with your mm. hands, do it very Virgo, have a plan, have details, um, because a lot of your individuality has to do with the details you notice and no one else does. I will say this about Virgos, especially Virgo moons and Virgo suns. This shows me that in your home life, we all know that Virgo is very picky. It gets picked apart. So they then take over the pickiness so they oh their whole life they grow up someone picks them apart this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong they get older they go oh shit no one's picking me apart anymore i should do that okay timish this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong <laughs> um because um and they do it because they're fixing virgos want to fix they want to heal um and the problem with that is is that virgos it shows that how do i say this without uh, just okay, so people who are to memorize the details because not necessarily a lot was unsaid, but there can be terms of like, okay, for example, I have a Virgo rising. When my dad would come home upset, I knew exactly what his tiger sounded like. I knew exactly what his footsteps sounded like in the hallway. If I knew like whoever was in the hallway, I knew who was coming down the hallway based off of their footsteps, based off of how the door closed, based off of because it's a. Virgo is hyper vigilant because of trauma, because of the unsaid. It's very intuitive. They they can feel the energy in the home because oh shit, dad pulled into the driveway like this. We're all about to get fucked up. Oh my god, mom is like just you hear one of these, you know it's oh, on. Oh, game over. Yep. Right. Um. So there's a lot of that based on the home life, and what I wrote in really big letters is just heal the baby because Virgo is a healer. Cancer has an emphasis on the womb, on the mother, on the nurturing. There is such an emphasis on to return to your center and to heal the child and give yourself the, the bare necessities that you weren't given. Security, comfort, love, value, convenience. Um, and stability, really. Um, so with this new moon happening on your second and eighth house, I wrote healing at last. Because the eighth house, you know this, is where we keep our secret. It's a very intense house. It is very death card energy in tarot. Um, it is very reborn. This is a time for you to rebirth yourself and... Oh, I'm like shaking. 
and to invest in yourself. Second and eighth house is all about investment. Eighth house also rules um, other people's money, so I find that very. I, I see you getting booked and blessed. <laughs> that okay. makes sense. Okay. I see you getting booked and blessed as the as things move into Leo, but also Jupiter is going to be headed into your eighth house for the whole year. Basically, you've had Saturn there. So Saturn, as we've just talked about, is karmatic. It is black and white. It is going to do the things we don't want to do. It will break up our relationship. It will pull out the secrets that need to be pulled out. It's going to deal with the things that we won't deal with. Um, and so Jupiter yeah, is coming that. back in no. there. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming in there to like relieve every all the shit that Saturn's done. And he's retrograde this time. And when planets are retrograde, it means an opportunity. Jupiter is the planet of opportunity. is returning back to you. A, a, an opportunity of abundance, an opportunity of knowledge, an opportunity to express yourself um, and sh and sh put a big light on the 8th house. The 8th house is usually like, oh, don't look over there. Don't. I don't want to talk about how I was fucking suicidal. I don't want to talk... Uh. But yeah. the, the new moon in Leo is like, no, bitch. Sun's right here. This is where the, the focus is, and this is how we can grow. And you know what? We're coming back to streaming. This was an opportunity that I thought I missed. That's so Jupiter retrograde. But it's back. Um, and Saturn there is like, okay, bitch, now that I've given you your reality check. <laughs> right? And it's, it's so funny because, like, <laughs> I've I've thought about this, you know, my, my whole experience working at Walmart. Looking back on it, I, it really felt like it was supposed to be a reality check. It felt like, Tim, you needed to experience this because you needed to see the alternative. Yeah. And the alternative is ugly. And it's not good. And it is yeah. not this that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, so no, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. And one more thing that I did kind of want to add as well, because I, how familiar are you with Vedic astrology? I'm um, pretty familiar. I actually thought okay. I was going to be a Vedic slash sidereal astrologer. A lot of my techniques are Vedic techniques using modern astrology. So I use okay. the Western system. Very interesting. Vedic um, I will say this, because I thought all Vedic was sidereal, but I got a mm -hmm. D4 chart reading and they use tropical and I, it was interesting. interesting. Yeah, I know, right? But um, the interesting, more interesting part is, uh, and I'm going to fuck this up, but I think it's the Atma Karaka. Atma Karaka. That. Thank you. Yeah. Um, which Yours minus Jupiter. Mine's oh, Jupiter. Oh, in your D4? In your D4, it's Jupiter. Yeah, because it's uh, 29 uh, degrees. It's man. the it's the, the highest degree planet, so. Yeah. Mine is, okay, okay. But yes, Jupiter no is... that means. So you, you're saying all this shit about Jupiter, like <laughs> yeah. going through the eighth house and retrograde, and it's like, oh, this is a Jupiter major part of wisdom. my life. He's all about wisdom. So now that it's moved into your eighth house on top of Saturn, everything that felt like torture, <laughs> because that's what Saturn feels like sometimes, like yeah. torture, Jupiter comes in to bring you a higher perspective, a higher knowledge. You know, it's like you you see everything you went through from a different perspective now, from a higher I tip. do though. You're like, I really oh do. shit, that was me? <laughs> oh shit. That's kind of the the energy we're moving into. So yeah. Um I think that's pretty much the gist of it. More mental work, get things done. Yes, um as we move into Virgo season, I'm very excited for you. You are a Virgo moon, which means your sense of security. Mars and Mercury are moving there. So you are going to be communicating more. Duh, social media. You're gonna be on social media more. You're gonna be actively pursuing uh, conversations with people that bring you emotional security. We fucking love that for you. So I mean, as we head into Virgo season, I think things will let up. Um, a lot of the cancers since the eclipse in June have been getting this work, baby. Um, so I think uh, healing at last is the theme. <laughs> I hope, fucking hope so. <laughs> yeah. You deserve it, baby. You deserve it. We all deserve it. You deserve it too. <laughs> no, you, Virgo Moon, specifically. Like, you talk about <laughs> <funny. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> people. Wow. That was powerful. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for, Thank you for letting us read for you today. Oh, like I had a choice. <laughs> you really didn't. It was completely forced upon you. And if you said no, my, you. my consent was not required for this. <laughs> and just a little, a, a little personal one from me. I love every single person in in the super stream group right? and unfortunately obviously monk couldn't be with us tonight monk's having a personal day guys she's been working okay but 
I don't think I've had this much fun in a long time. Like, it has been so entertaining. I have laughed my ass off. Thank you so much for even considering to be part of this little spiritual family that we've got going on right now. Join us because that, we monk? love it. I done replaced you, bitch. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I still love you. You're my platonic wife, bro. <laughs> it's time to lose some color Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Winter stays. <laughs> oh no. No, actually, it's it's really funny um, because I told Mango when we talked the very first time about this, I was like, I don't want to replace anybody because I knew that like y'all had six people already, and I don't know if you want to, I don't know if you want to throw in <laughs> seven or eight. Like, I didn't know how all this was going to work or if we we're going to rotate, but that was one of the first things I said to him. I was like, I'm not replacing anybody. You know, no one's getting bumped because Timish needs to, needs a spot. Needs, you know? Um, so it's it's very important that we remain a team. Um, yeah. yeah. I would, I would 100%. prefer that. And we will be rotating, too, just, like, to help yeah. people out with their schedules and, like, things like that. Like, if someone can't work mm -hmm. out, they like, can't get a Saturday off or something like that. Thankfully, my schedule is super, super available at the moment. Thank Once you. work starts getting, it could change, but it's more of a nighttime situation anyhow. And I can always, like, you know, hop on out to have some more space for other people to come on in. Same. Yeah. Same. I love the that's we got Countess in chat being all like, there's places for three more on screen. Hell no. no. Oh, Nine people doing reading wow. now. I feel no, like well, between really not places for three more. There are multiple personalities, not really a lot of room for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's... I'm happy with the, the amount of people that we have right now. Really, really super happy. Some people I never thought I would talk to, you know? Like, me and Marigold have known each other for like two months. Three. Mm -hmm. I don't know time. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a like, concept. It's just been a long yeah, time to me. <laughs> and there's something about this little super stream group that's just sucked us all completely in. Like, it. I feel like I've known these people my entire life, and I've still got so much more to learn about them. All. It's great, and nobody's getting gonna get replaced because it's not like that. It's not about you're more important than me. We're just friends that do something that we all enjoy and we all love and we all feel very, very passionate about together right. for fun and we help people. Because that's what we're here for. Yeah. Oh my god. Man. Is well, that it though? We done? Because I'm we, burning we are the fuck done. up. I need, to, I need to turn on fan. I, <laughs> I need a nap. We we take, Marco need to take her bra off. <laughs> I can't. I'm going to the bar in like an hour. <laughs> I was no. going to take a nap, but I'm just going to have to wake the fuck up. Oh my this God. is our second to last reveal. The next super stream will be revealing another huge piece of news to you, um, to, to the audience. And yeah, thank you, Timish, for coming back, for for being a part of us. We love having you here. Oops. We love that you're here. It is good to be here. This feels right, and I need to keep telling myself mm. that. And I want to touch, like, really quickly what Monk said, Monk said earlier in one of the readings. Like, oh my god, these readings are day and night. Like, the last time you got readings from us, right. and then this time, completely, mm -hmm. like, yeah. The leaf um, has uh, Y'all don't know. I was <laughs> I was on the edge. I was Cancers. almost gone. I really was. And then I came back and I was like, you know what? We, we learned something. That ain't an easy thing to do, Mom. Like, that's proud of you. That's growth. Yep. Let's and also so, selfish let's little moment. <laughs> now we get to keep you, so it's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> oh, I'm kept. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, that got real creepy real fast. I don't mean that. <laughs> I'm still not over. I know you like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be back for another super stream this month, probably, I... probably in two weeks, hopefully. Um, but until then, I guess. Thank you so much for watching us. We are Mango. 
Uh, Timish. Margo? <laughs> I, I, Margo? I didn't know I didn't know where we were going. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we'll work it out. We'll work it out. <laughs> work on it. Oh. But yeah, th please join the Super Stream Discord. You must accept the rules, otherwise you will be kicked out. We will eat your soul. Take our rolls so you can access our private channels. <laughs> You can always swear. access my privates. <laughs> Margo, I, Shut the fuck. I fucking hate you. <laughs> and thank you, a big thank you to Melinda for yes. being the host this time, doing this oh, amazing that. overlay and look all the overlay. commands and everything. It's iconic. Yay, you're welcome. Thank you guys for inviting me to be on the super stream as well last time. We love you. <laughs> we do. Linda. Oh my gosh. Alright. We'll um, are we going to raid somebody? Who's on? Who is on? I think we should. Who is on? Uh, Maple says the Power Rangers wishes they were as cool as the team of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Iris is on. Serotonin is on. Phoenix. Jan. Oh, Phoenix was in here earlier. Maybe we should do that. This who's, who's Jan? Harass the Phoenix. Tia Lira. Is, is he streaming? streaming? Yeah. What? What, what? does he stream? Wait, what? He's doing League of Legends. Oh, never mind. I um... don't... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um... Oh my goodness. You're gonna get a very angry written letter? <laughs> Yeah, I vote Phoenix system. Email. They were in here earlier. Yeah, I already put it yeah, in there, so you guys it. don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> don't go Phoenix. The ex bosses have spoken. Both me and Mango play League, and that's how we know that League sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I've dated enough men that play League to know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but it looks interesting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, are we ready? We're ready. We're ready. All right, I'm gonna hit the raid button. Bye. See you guys later. Peace, guys. Ow.